What's happening, everybody? On episode 412, CB and Alyssa help me share ours and our listeners' favorite pet companions in video games. Spoiler alert, there's more than just pets. There's a ton of news to talk about this week, including all kinds of announcements from Gamescom and a PS5 price increase. We've also got a lot of new games to talk about. I played Yars Revenged, which is based on an Atari classic. Kevin stops by to talk about Scathe now that it's in full release. And Chris Owens tells us about Madden 23. You'll also hear Rel's impressions of a new title called Jack Move. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 412 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. It is Tuesday, August 30th, and I am your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my good friends, first off, uh, the Mr. Cunning Stunt himself, CB. How you doing? You almost slipped up there, bud. I had to think about it. Yeah, I really had to think about it. <laughs> it's been a it's been a exciting few minutes, hasn't it? <laughs> it, it it has. Uh, also joining us, already in a laughing yes. fit, Miss Alyssa White. Alyssa, how are you doing? I'm okay. You lovely gentlemen are just cracking me up, breaking me. Oh, you called me lovely. Well, you are, and so is Scott. I don't know about that. Zach well, is Scott too. Is pretty. I know you're listening, Zach. You're lovely. <laughs> you're breathtaking. Yes. Anyway, that has been quite a week. I started my official first day of work today. School doesn't start till Thursday, but uh, I was at work all day today. Man. And uh, I'm already tired. It's <laughs> so funny because I'm that. like two days out from taking my time off. Yeah. Enjoy that. Well, let's get into the gaming business, shall we? Uh, kicking things off with some of the games that we've been catching up on. Alyssa, it's been a minute since you've been here. Why don't you tell us what you've been playing? Well, first off, I've played the first two episodes of We Are OFK. I have not played I the. Have no idea what that is. Okay. Well, it's it's definitely an Alyssa game. Oh, okay. So Japanese cats. most characters and cats. No Japanese. <laughs> no, oh. just, that was not correct. It's not Japanese. No Japanese. Okay. <laughs> but there but are cats. cats, and it is mm, okay. a very narratively driven game. So there apparently, I know Alyssa better than you do. <laughs> What is the explosion of cat media going on lately? Between Stray, there's what? a new documentary on Netflix all about cats. There's another game I saw recently advertised about cats. There's this. Does this have cats in well, it? I mean, they're just kind of, um, they're not a huge part of it. They're just kind of like in the background. I don't know, but cats are so hot right now. Dude. Hey, okay. Quick side note on that. I saw a meme that I have not seen in like 10 years. The, okay. The fat cat that can I has cheeseburger. Oh yeah. I, so I haven't was... seen that in years. <laughs> and also I'm like, cat. Anyway, Alyssa, sorry for the derailment there, but uh what is how are you liking We Are OFK? I really like it so far. It just feels really realistic. It deals with this group of three friends, and they're all on the LGBTQI plus spectrum. Um, mm -hmm. And they're just trying, they're living in LA, trying to become musicians, writers, trying to fulfill their dreams, but they keep getting just knocked down. And it just, you're mostly just- Do they get up again? Yeah, they do get up again. <laughs> well, you can't ever keep them that, down. That song's in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, wow. you don't do much in this game besides occasionally the cell phone that the character you're currently uh, viewing, dude, they're- your point of view, character's point of view that you're currently in, um, their cell mm -hmm. phone will ding and you can do a text exchange and you have options for text messages and they're all funny. And um, occasionally you'll have to choose a response or a mood in a 10 second time period when you're doing a social interaction. But most mm -hmm. of the game, you're just really watching it. And it's really cool because if you pause the game. It shows you how many minutes you've gone into the game, how many you have left, just like if you were watching, say, something on Netflix. Mm, okay. And there are little interactive parts at the towards the end of the episodes because every episode uncovers a new song from the band. Uh, I think it's called the band's called We Are OFK. And oh, okay. When the song is playing, you're doing all these different mini games. I don't think you can really fail, but it just kind of breaks the pace up and it's just a nice little change so i really have enjoyed the first two and i was kind of surprised how serious they got but also they were really funny and just how realistic it was there is a new episode out that i haven't played yet and i think there are going to be five episodes total um nice. and they're releasing one per week 
But so far, I really like We Are OFK, and if you're like a visual novel fan, I think you'd like it as well. Very cool. I love to hear that the episodes are coming out weekly. Yeah. I think we're past the point of episodic games coming out two to three months in between episodes. Oh, yeah, that was always Does a pain. That... Oh, that was awful. I mean, it got yeah. to the point where I just wouldn't even play it until all of it was released so I could play it at my own pace, you know, and hope for a sale or something like that, so... Glad you're digging it. I know you love those uh, narrative games. I do. So, anything, anything else? I'm also playing Saints Row, and it's not as the new one. Yeah, the new one. Oh, okay. And it's not as horrendous as a lot of people have said. It's certainly not Game of the Year material or anything like that. But I would say if you enjoyed the previous Saints Row games, you'll probably like this. Okay. Um, a lot of people have gone on about how it's too serious, but there is a lot of humor in there. It's not just all grim, dark stuff. Like, there is humor. It's just not as, you know, out there as Saints Row 3 was with, you know, the weapons and the all this kind of stuff. But I'm actually really... It's fun. It's not perfect, but I am enjoying it. Um, I've been doing a lot of side missions and stuff. But the customization, you can customize to your heart's content, and it's just... Even that's just fun. I will say the driving is kind of floaty. I mean, like, you'll be driving in a straight line and your car's just like, like, how'd that go? <laughs> for, since you guys can't see, I'm like doing my hands like in a, trying to do it in a serpentine motion, but it doesn't come across well. And um, <laughs> the enemies do feel like bullet sponges. I mean, you can be shooting them and they just don't react. And I had, w- I don't know, you're not really selling me on this, <laughs> Alyssa. It's just fun. It, it has issues, but it's fun. Like, it's just fun to sit down for an hour or two, play it, play a few missions. Um, and just, you have some roommates you interact with, and it's kind of fun to interact, see how different you are with each one. And, I mean, there's some real world stuff in there, like realistic stuff that you wouldn't expect to really see in a Saints Row game. Like, your character gets, oh, this is kind of a spoiler, but uh fired from their job. I won't say what kind of job it is. And your character's just depressed in bed for a while. And it just keeps telling okay. you, push the button, and you push the button and your character just doesn't get out of bed. Interesting. So So it's not like zany over the top like three and four were? No, 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 no. But it's not like Saints Row Two was. It's kind of in the middle. It's got humor when hmm. it's in its dialogue and um you can there's some humorous stuff with the outfits and the customization and but it's mostly contained to that it's not wacky weapons it's not over the top shop names and all that kind of stuff the most risque one i've seen so far which i think is a callback to the previous games is jim robs which isn't risque until you realize what the auto mechanic shops were called in the previous games and You just switch two of the letters. Oh, I think I know where that's going. I got it. Yeah. All right. That's we'll 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 we'll, yeah. I'm not gonna cut it off right there. (laughs) Not gonna say just that's that's just a little end joke for people that have played the previous ones. I totally get it now. (laughs) Wow, that's actually. I feel like it would be more clever if it weren't you know an R-rated joke, but um. Anyway, I'm glad to hear you speak positively of it because I everything that I see on social media is just oh this is a buggy mess and they're they keep releasing games that aren't finished and and I've seen some of the bugs you know in little in little clips and some of them are pretty hilarious not like Bethesda level yeah. well, almost Bethesda level I really haven't come Ubisoft across level. any bugs so far I've probably played about four or five hours so it might be further in. I know on day one there was like a 60 gigabyte patch, and it, I've only had one crash during my game. A 60 which, I mean, that's kind gig of, patch. Yeah. God, like, when are developers going to learn, don't release a game that requires a 60 gig day one patch? Yeah, because yeah. when I booted the game up, I was like, I'm going to play this now, and it's like 60 gigs, I'm like... I'm not playing this for another hour. <laughs> well, that's a whole game. Yeah, that's nuts. It's crazy. Anyway, uh, glad to hear you're digging it. I'm I'm curious, but uh, that 
and I, I would have said this before the game came out and people started blasting it, but that game just seemed like something I would wait for a for a sale. I would say, um, unless you're just a diehard Saints Row fan or you're just you just don't have a game to play, you could you could wait for a sale on it. All right. Fair enough. Five CB, what about you? Year. Yeah. Um so uh I took a trip in the way back. Way back. Yeah. I was uh I came home from work the other day and I noticed uh AJ was playing some games on my Xbox and I didn't recognize the game at first. And I was like, cool, I'll sit down and play with you. There's No Man's Sky. Oh. Wait, what? You played No Man's yeah. Sky? Okay, yeah. I'm listening. And so AJ's like, yeah, man, I just, I, I, I really started playing this and I'm digging it. Uh, he's been playing with uh, Logan. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, this is a fun little game, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I used to play this game. And he's like, yeah, like, it's, it's so cool. And I'm like, are you playing on yours or mine? He's like, oh, well, I saw your save file, which, by the way, I hadn't opened since 2018. Wow. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I, I didn't want to mess with your save file, so I just started a new one. I'm like, tell you what, open it up. And because they've, they've made a lot of quality of life improvements to the game okay. since, since like, because I remember I played it on PlayStation, like when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And then it came over to Xbox. And I'm like, yeah, I got back in. I played it fairly hard in 2018. And I just stopped because of other games. Right. Uh, in fact, I think other games was like Fallout 4. Hmm. Uh, so I forgot how much work I had put into that. And he's just like, yeah, it's cool. And I was like, he, he, he loads into my game, which by the way, they've completely overhauled the graphics, everything. You can actually play with other people now. So I'm like, this is really cool. So, so they deliver what they promised. Yeah, it's like 20, it's, it's finally there. Yeah. Uh, so AJ like hops in. He's like, oh, cool, Dad. You got a nice little ship, and he he goes up into orbit. And he's like, you have other ships. I'm like, oh, you only have one. He's like, yeah, I only have one. I haven't got that far in the game. And I'm like, why don't you uh, click on that one right there? Because I I spent the time and gra- ground out a capital ship. Which is like one of the huge, like one of the biggest ships you can get in the game. Mm-hmm. And AJ and Logan and they're sitting here just, and all of a sudden this thing just drops into orbit, and they're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a real fun moment, and we sat there and we played No Man's Sky for a bit. And nice. AJ was like, "This is really cool, Dad." He's like, "You've got so much work on this." I'm like, "Go ahead, just play on my account because I'm I'm probably not going to come back to the game unless I'm playing with you." So he's like, nice. "It was really cool." He's like, "Yeah." So I'll probably play a little bit over that over the next coming weeks with AJ because he's been playing that and uh deep rock galactic. I played that with uh Joel and uh, some other people. Yeah. A while a- back. AJ and Logan have been playing that game hard. They're, I, they're getting far. It, I kind of fell off pretty early. Yeah. Like I, I appreciate it, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. So, but yeah, no man's sky. Uh, if you never touched it and there's a lot now. Okay. I'm okay. impressed. Way to finally deliver. Um, other than that, uh, I, I got a new achievement game for you. Um, <laughs> Hidden Shapes. Black, uh, Black Skull and Old West. It's, That's uh, a weird title. Yeah. So I, I, this is the second one that they've put out. I was thinking I um, heard that ba- name before. Yeah, this um, before it was like Animal Shapes. And basically, it's just a big black and white vector graphic image, and mm-hmm. it's broken up, and you got to rotate tiles, and it makes something, and it's like, oh, look, a picture. Cool. So, for those out there that love chasing achievements out there, it's like $3. Uh, really, really easy achievements. Super easy. All right. Um, so, recommend that for, for my achievement hunters out there. Uh, and then I've also started playing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah. Now that theme song is playing a... in my head. <laughs> I still see Jeff Fox where these face. Oh, me too. Whenever I think of, think yeah. of that. Um, he's not in this. Yeah, I know. But... At all. <laughs> uh, been replaced with generic white guy. Okay. And uh, they ro- they rotate with um, uh, an African-American lady. It's It's weird. Like, the dynamics that they've done with this is bizarre. Because I don't remember mm-hmm. the the show being this weird. But uh, in the beginning, uh, it's not fun. Uh, Why is that? Very limited choice questions. 
Um, so it's like spelling, vocabulary, uh, math, reading, and life science is what it starts with. Mm-hmm. You have to play over and over and over and over to unlock additional questions. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah. And so it's definitely not a party game. No, not in the beginning. Uh, and it's a progressive unlock too. So it's so like... You gotta keep replaying it? Oh, yeah. Uh, because it has an XP bar, and as you fill up the XP bar, it's like, oh, look, your permanent record got better. Now we're gonna <laughs> unlock Earth Science for you. Mm. And now we're... Uh, I'm like, oh, God, I don't like when they do this. Uh, So it is slightly disappointing that for you to truly enjoy the game, um, you have to keep beating the game. Yeah. Those games need to just have everything unlocked. Well, especially questions. Just work out of a question bank. Yeah. It's no fun that I have to... Like, if you want to do unlocks, which... um, So... By the way, the the questions. So each each time you do an unlock, you, like you just start at kindergarten, mm-hmm. and then like each time you progressively through your permanent record goes up from like kindergarten to first grade, and then in first grade there's three tiers to hit. The first tier unlocks the question. The second tier unlocks like upgrades for your desk. Who cares? And then the third tier unlocks a new character. Oh wow! For, Who cares? For like the kids, <laughs> and then it's like okay. Now you go on to second grade. Here's some more questions. And then you can unlock stuff for your desk. And then you can unlock stuff for another character. I'm like, this is dumb. Stop making this so hard. Like, I want to play a game. It's, it's a trivia game. You don't need unlocks in a trivia game. This is stupid. Right. I agree. Yeah. Um, and then to play multiplayer, uh, it's, it's called Study, uh, which can support up to eight people. Um, but you are still working off the question bank that you unlock in the main game. (laughs) Like, this is stupid. So you're answering the same questions over and over again. I mean, each, each thing has like a hundred questions, I'm guessing. But when I was playing through the game and unlocking stuff, I ran into the same question twice in one playthrough. And there's only 11 questions in a playthrough. Wow. You need to go buy a lottery ticket. I'm like, this is terrible. Why did? <sighs> so you're not recommending. <laughs> and and on, top of, on top of that, I've actually found two errors in the like game. Like typing errors? Uh, there was a math question, which it's like, oh, um, by the way, all the math questions um, make you feel really smart or really dumb. Because when it's like, what is 73 minus 37? And it mm-hmm. gives you a slider scale to pick the number, but the slider scale is in between like uh, 25 to 45. So it's like, oh, we're going to put you in the ballpark already. Slide to where you think the number is. That's so weird. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's terrible. But there was a, like a fractions question, which it said, oh, you got it wrong. And I did the math four times on paper. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. Mm. It's just I wonder like, what that question was. Oh, uh, it was like a fractions question. I know. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to see it. And I, I, I don't have my my notebook in front of me. It's at the house, but I will find it. And I'm like, yeah. It's just like, oh, uh, oh, is five uh, is five fifths an improper fraction? I'm like, technically, technically it is, but it's considered a whole fraction. Yeah, but I'm like, it's not. I'm, I'm truly i'm like to me it, uh that'd be like five thirds yeah I'm like that's an improper fraction so it's just mm, the game makes me angry and then if you draw turn that three into a pair of boobs it's a really improper fraction yes yeah fun that's, fact that's that's a terrible joke man <laughs> it's awful wouldn't be the first time you've seen those today, though, would it, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. As for uh, me, uh, I have been picking away at Cult of the Lamb, and I have hit a frustration point with this game. Uh, if you remember me talking about this, it uh, it looks like a Scott Clark game through and through. It's half dungeon crawler. Actually, it's probably like a third dungeon crawler and two-thirds management sim. 
and I'm really enjoying the game. It gets really crazy kind of taking care of your cult, but I have either I've either done something wrong or I hit some kind of glitch where the game has blocked me from entering the dungeons. They call it the Old Faith in this game. That's where you actually progress through and fight enemies, collect resources to then use to build things in your uh in your cult area. And it's blocked me from going into there until I complete a checklist item. I have to perform a ritual in my temple. And I performed the ritual in my temple, but my game locked up. And when I came back and restarted the game, it still showed I didn't have the ritual completed, but it spent the resources that I used to perform that ritual. And now I don't have enough ri- uh, resources to perform the ritual again. <laughs> and there's literally no way to do anything, um, which is very frustrating. My my cultists are are you know dissenting because there's nothing to eat them but their own poop. Oh no! And that's not an that's not an exaggeration. You literally can turn their poop into a dish called bowl of poop and feed it to them, and it gives them like a fifty percent chance of getting sick. And so there's nothing to eat. Uh, there's nothing for me to grow. I don't have any money. Uh, I, I literally can do nothing. Oh, so my only like real uh, world cult problems. <laughs> yeah. So my only option is to start over, and you know how that makes me feel. Um, it's a shame. I'm really, I'm really digging this game, but I just don't feel like starting over. Thankfully, I'm only like 16 days into it, and I don't mean like actual days. You know, there's a there's a day night cycle. So I'm really not that far into it. It wouldn't be that big of a problem, but I just have such a bad taste in my mouth by something that's not my fault. It's not that I mismanaged or anything. I just, and I mean, e- even if you did mismanage that badly, there should still be a way out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Eating, like eating I just, a bowl of poop would do a bad taste in my mouth too, though. <laughs> yeah, probably would. Probably would. So it, It's unfortunate it, it, because like I was actually really thinking about starting playing this. I, I really hope you do. Because it's they do some really interesting things with this. There's a lot of management stuff that sounds like it would be annoying. Like, oh, you got to feed your people. You got to talk to each cult member every day and give them a blessing so that they like you better and they give you more. Uh, you know, whatever the re- I can't remember what the resource is called that you basically use to level up. Um, more experience is a nice way to say it. And they're doing that, and you got to keep. I got I got one dissenter. That walks around with a megaphone trying to talk everybody, uh, you know, saying all bad stuff about their cult leader. And um, I can put him in prison, but I don't have the resources to build a prison. So I don't know. There's just there's just so many. You can sacrifice. I actually did sacrifice somebody. That's why this guy is is pissed off because I he didn't like that I sacrificed somebody, which was something I was required to do. It was a checklist item. So (laughs) I sounds like you need to sacrifice him. Yeah, maybe, maybe. (laughs) But I can't. I don't have the resources to do it because in order to do a ritual, which includes sacrifice, you have to have a certain resources and I just don't have them. So I'm really frustrated because I cannot figure out a way to progress the game. And uh, I don't want to start over either, but I, I may just give it another shot. But CBI, seriously, give it a shot. I want to hear what you think because I think you would dig this game. I really think you would like it. You say I'm not so. right in the head. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> just that dichotomy of, of, you know, you're a cult leader, but all the characters are cute and fuzzy animals. It's just hilarious to me. And they worship you and, I don't know, Cult of the Lamb. I love it, but I'm frustrated with whatever is going on it. So let's go ahead, though, and move on to the week's news. Quite a bit to talk about this week. Uh, three new trailers. We got uh, gameplay for The Last of Us Part 1. We got a trailer for a game called Woe Long Fallen Destiny, which is coming on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC in early 23. And as of today, we got a trailer for Shovel Knight Dig, which is coming to Switch and Apple Arcade on September 23rd. Also, Gamescom 2022 took place this week. Lots of stuff to talk about there. Uh, we also have that the... The uh, Knights of the Old Republic remake has officially changed developers. We've also got a live action adaptation of Bioshock coming to Netflix. And this past week, the industry almost exploded with a rumor of Amazon buying Electronic Arts. And then lastly, Sony is increasing the price of the PS5 in certain markets. 
So there's lots of news to talk about. You guys want to just uh, all collectively just talk about Gamescom? I feel like we got to talk about Gamescom, yeah. right? We'll, we'll get to Gamescom because then uh, we got other news stories to talk about. Okay. So let's go through Gamescom. Uh, the, I mean, the, the big highlights that were shown on opening night were uh, the gameplay for Callisto Protocol. Uh, Sonic Frontiers got a story trailer. We got more Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, I'm sorry. And Sonic Frontiers officially has a release date of November 8th. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy has a release date of February 10th. Uh, Gotham Knights is coming out t- October 21st. That actually got moved up. Uh, how often does that happen? Not often. Very, very rare. <laughs> yeah, they're releasing it four days earlier. Uh, also, a survival MMO called Dune Awakening has uh, beta signups available. And then Dead Island 2, which I think people were had inklings of, but I uh, actually got some gameplay there that releases on February 3rd. Anything uh, there, Trooper Trigger, CB? Yeah. Callisto Protocol, bro. <laughs> yeah, right? Mm, that game just keeps looking better and better. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the point where I don't need to see anymore. Yeah, really just don't. stop stop showing us that anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Give us the game, because damn, that looks this... spicy. Yeah. December is going to be pretty awesome. Man. Yeah, man, I'm I'm getting nervous because like looking ahead, like we are about to get be inundated with a lot of games. Yeah, we are. And I'll even tell you that Dune Awakening, bro, yeah. I might, I might dip my foot back into that. Really? Moment. I All right. love the Dune universe. All right, CB will not be playing anything else <laughs> for the next. Uh, 18 months fight sandworms man come on (laughs) that looks like a blast and a half yeah Alyssa, Uh, how about you how are you feeling about the uh opening night well definitely callisto protocol is my most anticipated from the list because it looks incredible i keep forgetting josh dumel is the lead so i'm like oh it's josh dumel every single time um (laughs) the ending of that trailer it chef's kiss um, and I'm also, I mean, I thought Gotham Knights looked pretty good from the trailer, too. I'm not oh. sold yet. I'm oh, not completely no. sold yet, but I thought the trailer looked great. There's something that I caught in that trailer. Okay. I don't think Batman's dead, man. Batman's dead? And that's because the whole isn't this of, continuation of yeah. the, the Arkham series? And Batman died? Yeah, they're Batman getting all four of Arkham the, Knight? uh... Rob. Yeah, because um, what's his name took over at the end of uh, the third one, Arkham Knight. Yeah, it, like because remember at the end, like if you actually complete everything. Oh, I I just beat them. I didn't complete everything because uh, Wayne Manor like goes up in flames and stuff. Um, so wait, you you get a hundred percent completion, and your reward is Batman dies. <laughs> well, no, Batman dies regardless. Oh, but okay. like you get Arkham Knight. If I'm remembering correct, it's been a long time since I touched that game. Yeah, that we reviewed that game when we first started doing the gaming outsider. That's yeah. how long ago that game but came out. Gotham Knights, it's the rest of the Bat family, like Red yeah. Hood, Batgirl, Nightwing, all them. But if you listen closely, Harley Quinn has that line and she's like, just so you know, I've got one more surprise for you. And I'm like, Batman's not dead, bro. He's coming I back. Mean, I mean, are you really surprised? No, but like the whole point of the game was like, you know, Batman's dead. We got to work and like do the things. Also, I know Zach's going to be super excited because you finally see Talon mm-hmm. as a villain, which is awesome. But it's seeming more and more like Mr. Freeze is the main villain. Have we ever had Mr. Freeze as a. I mean, outside of like. You know the Arkham games that would have like have them like locked up in prison and stuff, and you could talk to them or whatever. Well, there's that whole area where you fight him in the police station. Okay, but, but it's just like they always lean on Joker as the main as the main bad guy. Well, the Joker was is dead. No, I, I'm not saying that they should do that in this one. I'm just saying like in past Batman games, it's always the Joker. Yeah, yeah, but I mean this one, it very much looks like Mister Freeze, the Court of Owls, and Talon. Gotcha. So, mm. plenty more to uh, talk about too from the rest of the show. Just uh, uh, things that, uh, um, 
the, I, I'm laughing because I can't believe they made a game based on killer clowns from outer on, space. It, but here's the thing: like, look, look at the company that's doing it. It's, I mean, isn't it the same people that did like Friday the Thirteenth? Thirteenth. Yeah. Like, it's, but what it's a just, weird property to choose. Like, I, I, yeah, I feel weird. like Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a bigger movie than I realized. To me, that was always like a B-roll movie. It's got a pretty big cult following these days, man. A- yeah. Apparently, if they made a whole game on it. But you would. I'm willing to bet they scooped up the licensing for that for real cheap. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, and, and I probably would have been more excited to try it had it not been that asynchronous type of yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, me too. I just, I just but that, I know those are very popular. That I'm just not a big fan. I, I played a little bit of the want, man. Huh? That's what the people want. I know. I know. Because um, what is it? we got the Friday the Thirteenth game. There's um, oh, what's the other one? Dead by Daylight. Everybody... Dead by Daylight. Like is it? It just had Evil Dead. Yeah, Evil uh, Dead. So, I mean, like, right there, you've got Friday the 13th, Evil Dead, like, both in the beginning were basically B-roll movies. So, uh, like, another B-roll movie, Killer Clowns. Did Killer Clowns have multiple movies, or was it just the one? No, it was just the one. Just the one. Yeah. So, it seems like this company's just like, we're gonna make B-roll horror like you fight against the bad guy, like you Friday the Thirteenth is getting a huge resurgence again mm-hmm. because of like the TikTok Chad dance thing. TikTok. I don't. I don't know what that is. I'm not, oh. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> ba- basically, uh, uh, the Chad character strips down to just his underwear and like will dance in front of Jason. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. All right. The other one that stood out to me was uh, the gameplay trailer for Lies of P, which is the uh, the dark, crazy version of Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not only does that look awesome, and I'm not even, I, you know, I hate keeping using the, the term. I'm not a massive Souls yeah. guy, but man, that looks really cool. And coming to Game Pass on day one? That's... Are you kidding me? That steampunk vibe is awesome. Do you remember back when um, Warren Spector first announced that he was doing Epic Mickey and he had that that original artwork that he was going to do for it where he was going to make it like super dark and steampunky? Yeah. And we all got super excited. Like, this is awesome. You're doing something crazy with the Disney license. And I know P- Pinocchio wasn't originally a Disney story. I, I get that. No. But I feel like this is us finally getting that to some degree, and obviously the hardware is a lot more able to to handle it. So I'm I'm stoked for that. And the last one I'll mention is uh, Return to Monkey Island, September 19th. That is quick. That's in like two or three weeks, and it's going to be on Switch, so I can actually play it. Well, I guess because I can't play point and click adventures on the Steam Deck, but uh, I am very very excited to jump back into some Monkey Island, man. Yeah. What about you guys? Anything else stand out? I think we got a huge Ooh. list here. We're not going to read through the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, not going to read through the the whole thing, but uh, I have thoughts. Okay. First off, the PlayStation DualSense Edge. Dumb. <laughs> the triggers are in the wrong spot. Did you not see? They're below the thumbstick. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the whole point, though, is to be customizable to yeah, whatever but, works? But I'm going to sit here and, like... How do you... Uh, <laughs> like it, yeah. audio podcast man I, I i understand that but just just imagine folks that i'm moving my fingers in weird ways uh it just it doesn't make sense to me and like oh we 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 put uh the shapes on the thing cool bro mm-hmm. nice i guess if it were xbox you would be all over it no because i i stopped using my elite controller yeah, it's strange. Um, I I just I don't know. I'm I'm getting bitter in my old age, man. So, moving on know. to the games, though. Okay. Um, under the waves. Mm-hmm. Looks sweet. Quantic That's... Dreams take on Subnautica. I'm there for. I feel like 
whatever Quantic Dreams puts out, I'm just going to play. Oh, uh, me yeah. too. Just because I like I like that kind of storytelling, even though I was not a big fan of, um, oh man, what was the one with the, uh, oh my goodness, Beyond, Beyond. Beyond Two Souls. Beyond Two Souls. I was not a big fan of that one, but I really liked, you know, Become Human. You know, even though all the memes and stuff, I still liked Heavy Rain. At the time, Heavy Jason! Rain was the coolest thing. Yeah. That was the coolest thing at the time. Like, that yeah. was an intriguing oh, yeah. detective story, and it was awesome. So, you know, I'm I'm not burnt out on this style of game, no. even though, like, we, we just played the quarry, you know. Don't the, you? I loved the quarry. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, there th- this isn't, like, new territory anymore, but I feel like, to me, Quantic Dream is always the original even though they're not but in my mind yeah. that's like that where i first got interested in this type of game you know outside of like you know pc games that had point and click adventures that were very yeah. narrative driven um i don't know the, the the fact that they take a narrative story and they put that much polish you know into yeah it its, looks into it its, looks great i want yeah and it just i love how they shot the underwater stuff it looks dark it looks creepy mm-hmm. so i'm excited I for miss, that i miss bioshock me too. That's really what I want. Um, Atlas Fallen. Mm-hmm. Man, that looks like fun. I want to craft things with sand <laughs> and fight <laughs> monsters. It just looks it it looks like a super fun little combat game. Um, where the winds meet. Uh, I'm loving the Japanese vibe, man. Even if it is very souls, it looks souls like. I'm loving the vibe. It looks dark to me. It kind of feels like. If you took uh, Ghost of Tsushima and like gave it a little bit of Silent Hill flair with some mm-hmm. bayonetta mixed in, there you go. I'm like, yes, I'm there. Uh, Scars Above also looks really, really fun. Um, sci-fi. Alyssa and I were talking about this before the show. I'm like, it feels like we're shifting away from like zombie time into sci-fi horror. Oh yeah, we talked about that before. <laughs> like, between- yeah, but. The, like all, you look at this list of trailers and it's like just confirming that yeah mm-hmm. and i'm like oh dude it looks like a lot of fun goat simulator 3 uh i'm picking it up it, it's gonna be <laughs> dumb fun but never there's the others there's a lot of these though that i'm just kind of like eh. yeah um aj was actually watch sitting next to me watching these and um hankai star rail came on and he's like, why is there a train in space? <laughs> like, he, he was just confused. It's it was anime. funny. It's anime. It doesn't have to make yeah, sense. But it, but it, <laughs> anime has to make a little bit yeah, of no, sense. But I'm just like, star trains? Okay, <laughs> I guess we're just going there now. We've, we've run out of so many ideas that just star trains. Alyssa, anything else that uh, we missed that, that you had your eye on? I mean, I'm definitely interested in new tales from the border. Oh, if I can speak, new tales from the borderlands because I did enjoy the first tales from the borderlands. So good. I know these are new characters, but I, I will definitely play it because love the first one. And let's see, it's one of my favorite Telltale games outside oh, yeah, of maybe good. like the the first season of The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. Then Tales from the Borderlands. I think I think I like Tales from the Borderlands better than. Wolf Among Us. The Batman one. I never had to play that yeah, one. I was a big fan of that one. It is really good. And I'm still... I Wolf Among Us will always be up there for me. <laughs> I gotta mention, I know Zach's not here, but I was talking to him on chat while this was going on, while the announcements and everything were going on. <laughs> and he was, he was very upset. <laughs> like, you know, this is supposed to be all about games. And the time that he was actually getting a chance to watch it or he heard about it, Hideo Kojima announced the podcast. Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. Brain structure. And then they brought a car out. The Pokemon I was, car. I was hoping somebody was going to bring this up because I'm like, why? I actually <laughs> saw a we comment made a car for gamers. on YouTube a- that made me laugh. It was because this car, you can, you can, it says hook your game console to it, I guess through Wi Fi. But anyway, so I was like, I could, I would just dream of being run over by a car by someone. Playing Pokemon and ha- hearing the theme song to Pokemon as I'm being run over. The bigger issue I have is that just the commercialization of yeah this hobby that I love so much. Like when I was a kid, I would give anything for everyone to be into video games like I was. 
And now that everybody is, it's all, you know, what can we sell that's not video game related? I'm but, sorry, man. It's really starting to look like the eight, the early 80s all over again. Yeah. The crash, crash is, is coming. coming. Yeah. I hope not. Because it's, we're, it, it's becoming su- too flooded with just crap. I mean, there's I so mean, many games. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's not enough games to play. There's, there's more than I can handle. There's so many games I want to be oh, playing, yeah. and there's just too much to play. Uh, so well, I'm, I, it's, but again, there, there's over thirty. There's over thirty trailers on this list, mm-hmm. and we talked about what six, right? There's a lot of flack, man. There is. And, I mean, there and, always and we even, is. We even skipped over a Telltale game. For the expanse, oh yeah, which Forgot which has that. the bones of just being great. I mean, that was but announced kind of like, before right, at E three, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but we're finally seeing it. It, it well, so and to be fair, I haven't just kind of meh. to be fair, I haven't. Uh, to be fair. <laughs> I haven't watched the show. I haven't. So I don't either. have any connection to it, but uh, people that watch it love that show. I need to. I need to correct that, but well. We didn't go into a super deep dive on uh, Gamescom, but there are plenty of other news stories. It's kind of a big week. Alyssa, which of these stories do you want to start things off with? I'm just intrigued that uh, the live action adaptation of Bioshock has finally got a director and a writer, and yes. they're both solid. Director is Francis Lawrence, who directed The Hunger Games Catching Fire, Constantine, I Am Legend, and the screenplay writer is Michael Green, who wrote so many great films. Logan, Blade Runner 2049, Death on the Nile. I mean, these are well-established film filmmakers. And finally, a story that I really want to see adapted. Sorry, I know the metal... I'm out. Uh-oh. You're out? Since when? When has Netflix been able to do a video game property that they just haven't pooped on? That's you make a good point. They just canceled uh, bro, Resident yeah, Evil. Yeah, Resident true. Evil didn't even make it one season, like not even a full season. Because if I remember correctly, they axed off two episodes. I thought you were digging that. I had hopes for it. I wanted to see a second season. And be like, okay, where are we going to take this? So like, nope, nope. And on top of that, Netflix. Like, outside of, what, four shows? They cancel everything after the first season anyways. But who was behind the Resident Evil series? I do not know who directed it, who wrote it. I'm not sure. I don't know. But, but I mean, that right there, we don't even know. These are these are recognizable names. You know, people behind you. Yeah, but Resident Evil is a recognizable name. No, 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 I understand. They went in on that on just the name of the 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 original ip itself and then just you know i'm not going to say they threw anybody out because i don't know who the director is i'm going to feel bad i'm going to look it up well i i you know Alyssa and i like we've both seen some of the netflix adaptations of animes both live action Mm -hmm. yeah and some like the bleach one bleach has a great storyline nope let's just throw it out and poop on it attack on titan Great storyline. Let's make a live action and poop on it. Death Note, same yeah. thing. And they just came so out you're taking, the Full Metal Alchemist movies, which I'm not going to watch. But I already watched it. It's terrible. But that's the thing is, Netflix, yes, they have the money to do these things. They have, but they have a proven track record that anything with a great story and a huge fan base, they just ruin it. The only- I'm staying optimistic, man. The only thing that they've done right was the animated Castlevania series. That's true. They did do that. Which was animated, not live yeah. action. Netflix shouldn't be doing anything live action that's not like the Ozarks. Mm. Because they ruin it. Stay away from my favorite properties, Netflix. It could be so good, though. It could the, be. And the it has atmosphere. Yeah. But... I, w- I would rather see Amazon take it or HBO, mm. anybody yeah, but Netflix. Great. I feel like Netflix has gotten to the point that anything they produce is just bottom of the bin garbage barrel. Except for Ozark. Yeah, but that's over now. Mm-hmm. I've, I've tried watching some of the other shows and it's just like, eh, it's okay. 
at best. I'm saying positive, man. One of these days we're going to get that video game adaptation that's just going to knock our socks off. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is coming. Uh, Who, Last of Us is Metal coming. Gear Solid? Is it Netflix? Because then they're going to crap on it. <laughs> no, uh, Metal Gear Solid is by the guy that did the uh, Skull I- Kong Skull Island Oh, movie? yeah, Jordan Voight. Jordan Vote Roberts. Voight? Yeah. Okay, but who's doing it? Is it like an actual movie or is it a series? No, it's an actual, it's an actual theater movie. Okay, then there's hope for that. Mm-hmm. But if Netflix touches it, it's it's going to wind up bad. Let me put it this way. There's no way I'm not going to watch a Bioshock movie. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah. watch, I'll watch the crap out of it. But I'm going to laugh when like the big daddy is small and not done right. And the main There's character no is it's like some old guy or something. It, they're going to find some way to make it stupid and weird. Probably. But. Remember that there's a huge audience of people that have never played Bioshock and do not know the twist, and they could do that twist really fun with live action. They could, but mm-hmm. I guarantee you they weren't. You're not going to get the Fontaine storyline. You're going to get random scientist who lives in Rapture. I hope not. Guaranteed. Give me the Fontaine story. Yeah. Because, I mean, the, the book Rapture was really good, but... I think what made Bioshock so cool is that you didn't know the backstory. You know what I mean? You didn't know why Rapture fell. You didn't yeah. know the ins and outs. Yeah. It just felt, it, ha- it had that Metroid feel to it of like lone person trying to work their way through. Five, oh, five bucks right now says they're going to try to fit zombies in. Zombies? Yeah. Man, I'm, re- I'm really close to doing a slap bet. I don't, I've already got one. <laughs> Let's go, bro. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Yeah, because you know I'm right. No, because I've already got one slap bet in the hopper right now. I'm not ready to do another one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get both sides of the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CB. What story Ooh. do you want to talk about? Well, you already know. I'm. Gonna, it's time to do some crapping. <laughs> Sony, what are you doing? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I have mixed feelings about this story. Can I you explain what's it. going on. I, I mean, no, so, people, this news is about a week old, but so, Sony is increasing the price of the PS5 in certain markets, and unfortunately, mm-hmm. their market set they probably shouldn't be increasing the price on. Um, five select markets uh, across Europe, Middle East, Africa, East Asia, oh, wait, Asia Pacific, and Latin America, as well as Canada. Uh, there will be no price increase in the United States. So I'm like. Hey, let's let's get our console out there, but we're gonna charge you more. And I believe some of them were as like as high as like thirty percent price increases. That's nuts. Yeah, that's scummy. I have we ever had a price increase of a console? Not once ever. And and I think you guys are the ones that said in the past that you're tired of the pandemic being blamed for everything. You know, and I get that the, the cost this, of stuff does go up. This but has nothing to do with the pandemic. Nothing. Remember no. when? Rem, no, no, no. I'm I'm actually siding with you on this. This bit, like you're you're ready to write me off already. But remember, like I feel like back in the day, these uh, you know Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo sold consoles so that they could sell awesome hardware. Yeah, and now it feels like. It's just such a focus on the hardware, and uh, granted, there are tons of games coming out for both. I, I I understand that, but it just seems like the focus is, let's just get these consoles out, because people people want these consoles so bad. Why was the PS5 so hard to get? Because everybody had to have one. Why? I mean, I, FOMO. part mm-hmm. of me is, 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 it feels the same way with the Xbox Series X. I love my Series X, but I did not need one. I really didn't need one. I was okay with the Xbox One. I would have a similar experience. Sure, the quick resume is great. Uh, you know, the up-res of, of old 360 games and even, even Xbox One games is, is good, but I didn't need one. You know what I mean? Back in the day, it was all about the software. It was, you want to play this awesome game, you have to have this console. Buy this console so that you can get this game right now and then all the other awesome stuff we're doing. And they're leaning so much on the on on buying the hardware that drives me crazy it's i'm 
I'm going to reiterate this for the people listening. I have always owned a Sony console. <laughs> always. One through five. I've been there. And this just further makes me angry because the, this generation, increased price on games. Make it so scalpers can just bend us over. And I guarantee you, like, it's still happening. My, I have friends that are still trying to get a PS5. And every time they, they get the notification, oh, we're releasing more online, so scalpers can't do it and everything. But they still sell out in seconds. And then you immediately see a flood of them on eBay and other places mm -hmm. for the, like, like, oh, yeah, I got five of them today. And I'm going to charge $100 over mark. Well, here's one on one hand. If I'm Sony and people are buying my product and turning around and making a bigger profit, Clearly, people are willing to spend that much money on the console, so why wouldn't you increase the price? Okay, people are bear willing. With me. Go ahead. People are willing because they have no other option. All because people can do something doesn't mean you need to be the scummy corporation and do it. Right. There's, there's two other big gaming companies that aren't. No, I'm with you. I'm not, and I'm not defending it. I'm just trying to understand their actions. Okay. They're and idiots. I, and, I, and I want to share with you um, part of the conversation I had with, uh, with Zach on this is because I was like, well, at least they're not increasing it in the United States. And his take is that uh, they're, they're not doing that because the games journalism presence is much larger in the United States. Mm -hmm. And if they were to raise the price in the United States, then everybody would crap on Sony. So they can get away with it doing it in these other markets. And everybody here is going to be like, it's not that big a deal. It's not happened to us. And we're not going to, we're not going to talk about it. Yet. Give it time. I mean, well, no, but I mean, every, every news outlet that talks about it is like, this is happening, but it's not happening to us. So we don't care as much. Generally speaking, I'm talking. And I want to, I want to read the quote from Sony. When they, when they announced this. Are you ready for this? While this price increase is, an, is a necessity given the current global economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priority continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that as many players as possible can experience everything that the PS5 offers and what's still to come. If you want to make it available to everybody, yeah. doesn't... Stop raising prices. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I swear to God, like, it it feels terrible to like dump on Sony this hard, and don't don't say like just because I'm an Xbox fanboy. I, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm 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 with you. I'm it, with it you. It feels bad that like every single week it feels like Sony's just doing another thing to just. It feels like they've unloaded the clip after shooting themselves in the foot seventeen times. They're like, let's reload and do it again. I don't know. The fact that they actually say, given the, this is a quote again, given the current global economic environment, if the global economic environment is poor, then why, then wouldn't it make sense I to know. go the other direction? That's yeah. why I said, it's just like, man, let's just keep shooting ourselves in the foot. But, Stuff that foot farther into your mouth. But supply and demand is a thing. It is. But is that, is supply and demand a thing? I'm, because of the shortage of this chips or because artificial scarcity? Artificial you know scarcity, I mean? plain and simple. Because chi chips are becoming readily available again. Mm -hmm. Like, I, we're starting to see, like, the market flood with them. Um, they're, like, I've been trying to get uh, my hands on a Raspberry Pi W for the longest time. And it was like, oh, chip scarcity, can't get it. I got two today. Wasn't yeah. hard. So chips are becoming a thing. What's going to be, it's going to be absolutely hilarious if Phil Spencer walks out sometime in the next week and just goes, we're going to drop our price by like a hundred bucks. Oh man. Like, do you realize the <laughs> ultimate kick in the teeth that would be to Sony? Just like, oh. boom, gotcha. I wanted to do it like uh, what's his name did from Sony when he announced. Yeah, just the... like literally, like just sets up a stage, walks out. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Mic drop. And just walks out. <laughs> that's that's all the announcement is. I just I would lose it. That would be pretty cool. And it would and, be the right time to do it. Yeah. Or 
I, I'm actually kind of surprised that Nintendo hasn't like, we're going to lower our prices to help the common consumer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, man. I am just waiting. Cause Sony just wants to keep just mm, pissing me <laughs> off. And yeah. I guarantee you, I'll be right there. Like when the PS six comes out, I'll buy it too. But, <laughs> but right now, like I don't this, know, man, after this, this console generation, I'm, I'm less and less excited about the next next one. Yeah, like, but I, I mean, we're still. I, like I, 10 I'm years so out. happy. I know it's easy to say that, and I'll I'll get the FOMO as well when that time comes around. But I, I'm I'm so satisfied. Like I'm I'm completely satisfied we're with satisfied, the hardware and that I like have. Now. Not a ton of first party titles either. I don't sure. care. There's plenty of third party titles that I I, I don't but, even get to play. But that's what I'm saying. It's like we're so content with everything right now that there doesn't need to be that influx of first party titles. Like, mm-hmm. bro, there's there's still good games out there. Don't need it. Yeah. And the indie scene is just just feels insane. Dude, the indie scene right scene is great right now. I'm mm-hmm. loving it. Yeah. So much to play, so little time. Well, I got to pick a story. Um. <laughs> I really, I really want to talk about this this Amazon thing, but I know it's not really news, so it seems silly no, to talk about it. No, it's not news. It. We're not talking about it. Yeah. So I'll just mention the the Kotor remake, just briefly. If you remember, this was originally being done by uh, Aspire Media, but Saber Interactive Studio, a Saber Interactive Studio in Eastern Europe, has taken over the project. Uh, the issue is quality issues, apparently. So now, uh, I mean, was this game announced like two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. And now Starting it's looking like it'll scratch. be at, at least two years before we see this game released. Um, I thought it was a fun fact, too, that both of these companies are owned by Embracer Group, which was in the news last week for their big ac- acquisition. <laughs> yeah. Man, th- it just feels bad when you like quality issues. So I'm debating. Do I... Uh, do I go ahead and just play like the original? I have it on iOS. Yeah, just, just play the original, man. Play the original. Just do it. It's all good. I, you actually you know it, man. You 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 missed some news because you got the email today too. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead, folks. The Intellivision Amico is not dead. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize we both positive. got emails today confirming they're getting ready to start production. Yeah, what was crazy is the way the email started out, it was, oh, we found some issues and this bug with the controller. We thought that and it was a, it was a bunch of jargon that I kind of had to read a couple times to understand and I still didn't fully get it. But I was like, man, this does not sound like good news. No. And I said, no, we fixed that. So we're ready to move forward. And we partnered with this company and with this company. And I'm like, oh, man, this is actually might happen. Yeah. They're like, we partnered with some people and we're getting ready to start some like test quality units. Mm hmm. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> U- units are being produced, finally? Did, did now, you cancel your pre-order, Scott? I did not. That was going to be my question. Mm, that was going to be my question, is did we pay for that, or did we just pre-order it? And you, you paid $100. They, did I pay? Oh, I paid $100 of it? You paid 100 of the 199 Nice. So we, we owe 99 bucks. But they... And I, but but I, no, I got, the, I got the fancy one, though. Oh, oh wait, no, no. So it was uh two forty nine ninety nine, so we owe hundred and fifty bucks. Right. So I'm I'm actually kind of curious because this thing may actually finally see the light of day. I hope so. And I have games for it already. Yeah. So I'm excited. And then on top of that, they they go further into the email. Apparently they've now started licensing out some of the games. So some of the games will be coming to multiple consoles too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they said one of them will be a flagship title. So I'm wondering if Earthworm Jim three, uh, Earthworm Jim four, may see other consoles. That could be pretty cool. Yeah, Is Tommy so. Tallarico affiliated uh, with them anymore? No. Uh, so weird. Well, he was I know such they a... they booted him out because that's that Phil Adams guy now that mm-hmm. runs everything. I think Tommy still sits on the board mm. because he's got a lot of money tied into it. But they're it feels like they're moving him farther and farther to the back of the bus. So right. eventually it'll just be like, and we let him go and nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned for more. Hopefully that is a uh, good news because I still think that console is pretty cool. Uh, it could, that, it, that, it that, could be. I'm just, I'm still nervous, man. 
still nervous, but hey, at this point, I didn't, you know, that hundred bucks is gone either way. So <laughs> yeah, it's I'm never gonna see that hundred bucks again. But I may, I may actually see a console apparently. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on and uh, talk about Patreon very quickly. As you guys know, we have a Patreon page where you can contribute each month if you'd like to get some bonus content. And by the time you hear this episode, hopefully we will have some extra content available for you. Uh, CB, what are those upcoming episodes? Well, Break the Seal of Max Payne 1 and 2 is still out there in the ether. Uh, But I know for a fact that the Retro Outsider episode on Little Samson has been recorded. Yeah, it has. There, there may be some some quality gems that you may hear in there about pricing. <laughs> Find out what I actually paid for my copy. Yeah, it's it's oh, there. It's embarrassing. The, um, the trade off episode is recorded as well. Oh, the and so the trade off episode of Link's Awakening versus Sonic Generations is done. I mm-hmm. actually now have the Sonic Generations in my hand. I will be playing it. Oh, it's so fun. So, uh, <laughs> Desert Island Games with CJ Moore should be coming soon. Uh, and if I can ever get Scott over to my house for more than five minutes. Saturday. I'm, I'm free Saturday. I work. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wah, wah. But, but soon, because, uh, I'm about to have a whole lot of free time. All right. And if you'd like to check out those in all of our previous episodes, head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. Uh, we would appreciate the contributions to help keep things moving here at the gaming outsider. And uh, also so that we can get some games to do some giveaways. We just gave away a copy of The Quarry, had two copies of Sonic 2 on Blu-ray, as well as a $30 gift card. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely if you're a Patreon contributor, your chances do go up. Let's go ahead now and move on to the new games that we've been playing. Zach isn't here again this week, so I will be reading the new titles that you can pick up. Destroy All Humans 2, Reprobed. That is such an awful title. <laughs> That's a great name. You stop that. <laughs> PS5, Series X and S, and P- PC on August 30th. Immortality on Series X and S, PC, iOS, and Android August 3rd. August 30th, excuse me. Inscription, PS5 and PS4 on August 30th. Prinny Presents NIS Classics. Volume 3. What is NIS? Nippon Nippon Ichi Software. Oh, okay. Glad you're here. Make some games, man. (laughs) Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Kawabunga Collection, coming everywhere August 30th. Tiny Kin, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, August 30th. Ooblets, Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, September 1st. The Dragoness, Command of the Flame, PC, on September 1st. Anno Mutationum, on the Switch, September 1st. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R. PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, Switch, PC, September 2nd. Lego Brawls. PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, September 2nd. Made in Abyss, Binary Star Falling into Darkness, PS4, Switch, and PC, September 2nd. And lastly, The Last of Us Part 1, coming to PS5 on September 2nd. CB. What for, I already know the answer to this. I don't even know why I'm asking. What are you asking? What are you asking, uh, which, friend? Which uh, title here are you going to be picking up? What do you, what do you think I'm going to be playing? Uh, Cowabunga Collection. Well, that's one of the two. Okay. I have Immortality. to guess. Immortality. Yeah. Immortality, really? Yeah. Immortality looks sweet. Yeah. You want to explain to everybody what it is? Uh, it's a live action narrative game. Mm hmm. I li- it's live action, like pe- people doing things, yeah. making you choices. And, you and Alyssa love those games. And Dude, they're great. It's from the guy Play who them. made her story and telling lies. Mm-hmm. And it's on yeah, Game Pass we're... today. Yeah, as we free. record. Again, I don't know I'm what's not, coming to Game Pass. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to turn down free, man. I like free. You. Alyssa, anything else besides immortality? I am definitely interested in Made in Abyss, Binary Star, Falling into Darkness. I swear, this series always has long ti- subtitles. Um, I'm really intrigued because you can play both through the story of the anime's first season, but there's also a new campaign where it's a completely new story. I love this anime, so I am intrigued by that. So I may pick that up at some point because it looks nice. pretty cool. I am all about Cowbunga Collection. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be there. And I think I've mentioned this before, but 
I'm strangely really excited to play those Game Boy titles. I don't know why. The Foot Clan one is actually pretty decent. Yeah, I just remember really liking that back on the original Game Boy so much. So I am I'm really looking forward to that. Totally. Do you don't um, want to get reprobed? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I did not like the first one. I I I, I actually reviewed the oh, I first. remember. Dude, I did not. Um like I will say all. Lego Brawls does actually kind of interest me a little. You're no, not gonna like, get that. Probably not, but no. it, it's it's it honestly I could see that coming to uh Game Pass later on. Yeah. Oh, I could as well, yeah. Yeah. So well speaking of new games, Scott, uh you've been playing Yars Recharged. I have. Have you played it yet? No. Dude, why have you not? I, I've been harping on it's, you to play this game. It's been a busy week, man. I know. It's been a, you get enough time to get achievements in the Vector Graphics Pirate game or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Because well, achievements, yeah. bro. <laughs> Dude, I got 750 achievements in an hour on Yars Recharge, and it's your kind of game. I know anyway, it is. Now, uh, I know you've played the original, CB, right? You've yes. played Yars, Yars Revenge. Yes. Alyssa, do you know what Yars Revenge was from the original 2600? I do not. Okay. Yars Revenge was one of my favorite games from the Atari 2600 back in the day. And they're doing the, what was it? What was the Pac-Man game that they did where they kind of redid it? I know this was an Atari that did it. It was Namco. The Pac but... one? No, 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 no. Way back, like like 10 years ago. Oh, the Championship where... Edition one? Championship Edition, where they took uh, the formula of an old game and gave it like new mechanics and new power-ups and stuff like that, that's what Yars Recharged is. So, Alyssa, since you have no idea what Yars Revenge is, I'm going to kind of give you the idea. And all of this is in my review, but it sounds like a really silly idea, but it was it was so cool when I was a kid. And just look at the box art for the original Yars Revenge, and when you see the actual gameplay of Yars, yeah. Yars Revenge, it just doesn't look nothing like it. But So, you play as a little flying insect, and there is an enemy that is behind a giant barricade and you have to get through the barricade to be able to kill it, but you can't kill that barricade with just your little guy. So you have to gnaw your way through the barrier while dodging projectiles that are being fired from the enemy behind the barrier until there's enough space to get through there. And then you actually fire from off screen, this cannon that comes in and you have to line up the shot to get into the middle and then there's the, the board resets and you start it again. It's a little tougher the next time. Now, granted, this is Atari 2600. And, you know, that's, that's how games were on the Atari 2600. Absolutely love that game. I don't know why. It was just something about the multicolored graphics because there was a little barrier thing for you on the left-hand side that kept you safe from bullets. It was, it was, it was awesome. So Yars Recharged takes that game that I loved and have so much nostalgia for from when I was a kid. And they've redone it. They've completely redone the game, um, but the mechanics work slightly different. You still play a little flying insect, but the game now operates more like a twin stick shooter. So you're moving the character with one stick and shooting in the direction that you want to with the other. And the barrier that is now hiding the enemy that you're attacking are little hexagons. And you can actually fire a little pea shooter at them, and or you can actually go up and nibble away at them they actually use the word nibble in the in the description of this and then once you start killing some of the enemies it starts this meter up on the far left hand side and when the meter fills up the cannon comes into place you fire your little yar ship he's not a ship but your little insect thing into there and then you fire this you know pulse beam or whatever and and destroy things so the basic concept is the same except you now have a little bit more of an aggressive pea shooter. And there are things that are firing at you that aren't the main enemy. It's almost like these defenses. And you nibble your way through or fire your way through, and you destroy like a laser turret or a missile turret. And when it does that, it leaves behind a power-up. It could be a laser beam. It could be a machine gun, like a rapid-fire weapon. Or it could be a spread shot or a try shot. And... um. You work your way through, work your way through, clear enough path, get your shots in, and it clears the board. It's pretty much the same thing, but it is so much fun because they've, 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 they've done the original game justice, which I feel like is never done with these like remakes, and I'm saying that in quotes, 
they they just don't do it. They don't they they try to capitalize on something and it's just like always as weak. This is great. This is so much fun to play because it becomes almost like a puzzle game. Because you, you get a better score the quicker you clear the board. So you're trying to figure out the best way to navigate through this without getting hit. And because if you clear that that main enemy at, at the far right side, or or because sometimes there's multiple ones. It actually just clears the entire board and the whole thing explodes and cascades in this this satisfying display of of orbs and stuff. It's just so so cool. I I have one question. I have plenty of answers. Please tell me at some point in time they use the original Atari explosion noise. I don't remember that, but I feel like the some of the sounds sound very familiar. Now, granted, the sound quality on the Atari 2600 was not very I good. I don't care. If <laughs> they <laughs> didn't include it, they did it wrong. I, I don't hear... I, I know the sound you're that like, you're, you're... Yeah, I can't recreate the sound. I know what you're talking about. It does not do that. It more it more does like a... messed up. Like when something explodes in space, it kind of... You know, it's it's kind of so, one of so those. They, so they went from that classic explosion noise to apparently throwing baby powder. Dude, I... Well, no, but but all of them going at the same time, and it's it's cool. I I, I, I will admit, I I do want to play this. I just you you really do want to play this game, man. This is this has you written all over it because uh, the one thing that I don't like about it, and unless I've missed it, I don't see any online leaderboards where like I could challenge you, like we could try to compete Ooh, against each other's scores. Yeah, that's I'm gonna score. I'm gonna look again, but the but when I looked, I did not see that. Um, but yeah, you gotta gotta play this game. The only thing. The only other negative I have is that there's not enough. Like the I, I'm almost the arcade mode is tough. You know how arcade modes mm -hmm. are. There's but there's only a few boards, and um, then the arcade mode's done. Then they have individual missions where it's just like you know finish this finish this scenario basically, and it's all different. It becomes crazy because it's not just one screen anymore. Yars Revenge was all on one screen, right? Now it actually kind of scrolls up and down and back. So you actually have to kind of work your way through. And still somehow get the cannon to to find a pathway through all the all the the hexagon pieces. It's immensely satisfying, and it scratched that nostalgia itch so much. I really hope that they do this kind of treatment with more classic Atari games. I mean, just think of like how many games on the Atari that are not super fun to play now. Outside of nostalgia, you know, they're fun for about five or ten minutes, and then you're good. Like, like, I, I want more recharged versions of classic Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I mean, have you played which Which of the other recharged ones have you played? Uh, Galaga, is it called Recharged? No, there was there was a Galaga. It's like a Championship Edition, like Pac Man, There's... which which I enjoyed immensely, though. Um, the couple Pac Man ones that they've done. There was the Missile Command one. I tried that one. and I remember not liking that one as much. That's uh, a hard game. It doesn't. Was not, I was never a big fan of Missile Command. Anyway. Missile Command just unfortunately doesn't translate without a trackball controller. Yeah. Trackball is what made that game fun. Um, I was so I was sitting here thinking like how I could update some of these games, and because they did a they did a centipede one too. Mm, that that I, was on um, that was on Switch, wasn't it? Yeah, I feel they screwed up with the centipede one because I would see it. I'd love to see a 3D centipede one Ugh. where you're moving back and forth and you can see it coming down. And like, you can that would see be pretty shoot. cool. I was like, that would actually be really cool to see. Like, and that one, you would have to get the original centipede noise. Yes. Yeah. I can hear <laughs> that in my head right now. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving these recharged games. I hope they continue doing it because a lot of them have a lot of potential mm -hmm. it's just as long as they keep doing them right i agree this one did it right it, they really did this one right i and it's 10 bucks guys 10 bucks and like i said it, it's a shorter experience but i got all but three of the achievements in like an hour and a half two hours and, tops. And you know what the funny thing is we would have never got these if it wasn't for that darn atari vcs console this is actually right. available on that by the way yeah, well, that's it is. <laughs> so all the the Atari Recharge games were originally exclusive to that, mm -hmm. but I'm so because it didn't, didn't sell well, they opened it up the licensing for other consoles. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, just keep them coming. Thank it, thank God they did, because uh, I I would have 
I felt like I would have missed out on this one. This uh, this game put such a smile on my face, dude. I I, I can't even. I've been, how much have I been bugging you to play this game? It, almost every day. <laughs> which yeah. luckily, luckily, I will be playing it soon. It's just I had some other things. I mean, come on, man. I got a baby coming. No, I know. I know. I just can't wait for the obligatory text from CB that says, well, got all a thousand achievements. It's only been 45 minutes because he's much better at these types of games than I yeah. am. But, yeah. <laughs> One of these days, man, I'm going to teach you how to be good at these. Probably. Probably. Yara's Recharge. I'm playing it on Xbox, but uh, like Alyssa said, it's on Atari VCS and it's pretty much everywhere as well. So check out that game. It is, it's a blast. Like if, if you are a fan of Yar's Revenge, this is an absolute no-brainer. I kind of want to get somebody's take on this that didn't grow up with Yar's Revenge like I did to see if, you it, know what? if it's just I, me and nostalgia. Or I got the perfect opportunity for you. I'm going to make AJ play it. Do it. Oh, I want to hear what awesome. he says. Because somebody but, his age won't, won't have any connection to the original. But don't tell him how to play it. I don't remember if there's a tutorial or not. I just want to see if he figures out what you have to do in this game. Because when we were kids, there was no tutorials in 2600 games. Actually, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there for our listeners as well. Uh, if you'd like me to start doing a Patreon thing where I torment uh, my 14-year-old <laughs> with some of these games, <laughs> we'll gladly start doing it. Yeah, it needs to be a YouTube thing. we got to do that on a video. It'll be fun. All right. I want to let you know, guys know we got another uh, couple reviews right now. I sat down with Kevin, uh, Chris Owens, and Rel to talk about three games. But I'm going to preface this by telling you the microphone that uh, uh, Owens had uh, is not the original mic that he was supposed to be using. We had a, uh, a technical error. So we had to use a headset that is not the highest quality. So I apologize in advance for the crackles and uh, clips. Um, but it's the best we could do, and I wanted to get him a chance to talk about Madden 23. So I'm going to go ahead and play this rev those reviews for you right now, and I hope you enjoy them. Well, I am here with quite the crew today. I've got three friends joining us to talk about a game that they've been reviewing each. First off, Mr. Kevin Honingford. What's up, Kevin? Not much. How you doing? Doing all right. And long time no see, Mr. Chris Owens. I have risen from the ashes of silence to be here today, and God bless you guys for letting <laughs> me be here. And the guy who took time out of his day from watching his, uh, is it now three-year-old? Almost three and a half. Almost three and a half. Mr. Rell, how you doing, man? Not bad. I'm making cookies. You're making cookies? What kind of cookies? Chocolate mint. Ooh. Ooh. I'll be right over. I'll be right over. So after the, <laughs> is, after the terrible twos, is, now, is it now duck and cover? Uh, it's the three-nager year. Oh, dear. Three-nager. <laughs> yeah. That's a new one on me. I like it. I like it. All right, well, I want to kick things off talking to Kevin about uh, this game, Scathe. Now, you've talked to me about this in the past, Kevin. This is a PC game from <clears throat> Damage State, and it was provided to us by a PR company by the name of Quali. Uh, now, since we talked about this last, you said that this game has had a complete overhaul, and you have been just singing its praises to me via text, but wouldn't tell me why, because you wanted to save it for this conversation. So uh, kind of tell us what it was, what it is, and why it's so awesome. Um, well, well, Scathe for starters is a, it's being described a lot as a bullet hell first person shooter. All right. And, and like we discussed last time, when, when you put those two words together, it doesn't really sound like something that would necessarily be fun. It um, sounds like Returnal. Yeah, I guess it's third person, but. I, yeah. Um, but it is an absolute, an absolute blast. Now that they've opened it up to where. You can play with different weapons. They've they've made all kinds of new things available. Um, it is it's completely changed my view of the game now that I've seen the complete thing. Uh, and and if you like first person shooters, you need to play this game. I I got like like a Doom vibes a little bit, like exactly even a little bit thought. of even a little even a little bit of 2016, but not quite as refined. Yeah, yeah. on a scale of one to Doom, how Doom is it? <laughs> um. Maybe a two. It is Doom only in the first person and the the gore factors. Um, all right. Because outside of that, it is like all of the enemies are, like I said, it's a bullet hell. So there is like a pattern that all of the enemies will be attacking you with. And you, have, you, you basically have to recognize these patterns and do a bunch of dodging, ducking, weaving, um, getting the attacks in when you can to survive each room. And the other part that makes this 
challenging but so much fun is the way that they did the actual map for the rooms. Because if you remember, right. Scott, we talked about how like it was very barren, how it would show where you had been, but nothing outside of that. Right. Well, it still does that. To where you, you, when you open the map, it just shows each room. Like when you start the game, if you open the map, you'll see the starting room because that's all you've visited so far. Yeah, that sounds pretty standard. You go, you go to the next room, it shows the room you're in then and, it's, and still shows the starting. So it, so it shows where you're at and where you've been and how they connect. What they've changed now in, in this full review copy is now each room has like a marker that will tell you what's in it. So it kind of gives you an idea where you need to go to do things. It'll tell you, like, like where you need to go to get the weapons. Uh, like mm -hmm. There's a marker on each room that says this room has a weapon that you don't have yet. And if, and if you got it, it'll, t it'll, it'll, like, the spot will be filled in, meaning that you have the weapon. It's not something you really need to worry about. Um, rooms will also be marked with a, basically, it, it tells you where the boss is. So, so if you get close enough to a room to where it's one of the ones that branches off of one that you've been to, it'll show you, hey, the boss is here because this is where this key is located. And, gotcha. and, and, okay. to, and to get that key, you have to beat the boss of that biome. So you've got a little bit more direction than you did with the preview build, it sounds like. More direction. And the levels are also the other thing is that, like they weren't active when like I saw the what, what turned out to be, I'll just call them buttons. But there are like things like icons in the wall that you have to shoot and it turns it into like that doomish kind of puzzle where you'll hit it and it'll raise a platform or it'll open a door but it only does it for so long most of the time so you and a lot of times there's multiple stages so you have to figure out which order you want to shoot the icons in to be able to run and jump and and hit the platforms without you know falling into the lava and obviously losing a life is it a one and done kind of situation or do you get multiple shots at it? No, it's you can normally they will reset within a matter of minutes and you get 10 lives and you can find extra lives throughout the levels. Um, I still had not been able to do the co-op feature um, because there just wasn't any games available. So um, that that I do think would even make this more interesting now, now mm -hmm. that there are because because you could have one person shooting something while the other person is running to, you know, one person shooting the icon. It's like a metal skull that you'll find on the wall. And, okay. and the other person could be running to jump on the platforms as they come up or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of intriguing, like, puzzle situations like that. Um, some, some of them, like, like, I'm still playing the game, and I can't, some of them I can't figure out where they go hmm. or, or how to get to them. Now, are these levels procedurally generated? Remind me, or are they nope. are they set? Nope, they are all set. They're all static levels. So, you so so the more you work at it, the more you'll know what you have to do. Um, and, and basically, the way that like if you die, if you lose all of your lives, you, it starts you back like basically three stages back from where you started. So you have to go through those again. So dying oh. is not a start over from the beginning. But it still does kind of suck because a lot of times it, it takes a lot of work to get through these rooms yeah. individually. Especially because you're not going to have all those easier rooms to get through and acquire weapons, right? Yeah. Yep. So in, in some degree, it almost makes it harder, but it's giving you another chance. Now, you have the option to start over if you want to, right? Uh, no, it, it just basically starts you over like, like that two, two or three levels before where you, where you were. Okay. So, so no, that's so, not an option. Go ahead. I thought I could. Yeah, guess, call me somebody, crazy, huh? but when I saw the trailer for this game, and it looked like there's also some elementals involved. Is, is that true, or am I just nuts? There are not really elementals. They are different biomes. So, so there's not like an elemental, like weapon that you can use against other things. There, there are like like you run into enemies that like will hit you with something that's poison, and it'll do like a damage over time for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but most of what you saw in the trailer was just different biomes. There's industrial, there's temples, there's nature. Um, yeah, it's just different biomes and they all have their different aesthetic and different monsters. Too, yeah, my or my very too. first thought to that was Bioshock. So that's why I was like, yeah. I, that grabbed yeah. my attention because of that. Yep. So how satisfying is the gameplay? I know, uh, Rel was asking on the scale of one to doom, how doom is it? And uh, I know you said it's not similar, but is it, is it, do you get that same sense of satisfaction? With it the, is. It is so. So it's really hard for me to compare this game to Doom because I I love Doom, uh, but it's not the same. 
like Doom, you were very much like a, almost an invincible guy running around just just rip and tear, right? Mm-hmm. And here it is much more survival. Like ah, if okay. you just go running through, run and gun, you'll you ain't gonna last very long at all because, like I said, these bullets come at you at a pattern very very fast. So. I mean, they're slow enough. It's, it's very hard to explain, but they're slow enough to where, like, if you just watch them go by, you can actually watch them track across the screen. But they're so rapid in succession with their patterns that if you get caught in them, it's going to do some heavy damage real quick. And that, How hard and, is it to, to navigate, you know, dodging in three dimensions? It, t- it took some getting used to, I'm not going to lie. Um, mm-hmm. the, the biggest thing is I, I forgot I could jump a lot of times. <laughs> uh, I, I kept because, in, like in Doom and stuff, you're so used to just strafing, and and, right. and and all the first person shooters, you're just so used to strafing left and right, and that normally does enough. And it took me a long time to figure out. Wait a minute, there's a whole other axis I can use with jumping over some of these bullet patterns. Um, gotcha, and, and that helped out quite a bit. But it does take with this style of play being the first one of this kind I've ever played. Uh, it did take some getting used to, but once I did get used to it, like I said, I this is the most fun I've had in a game this style, like that first-person shooter style, in a really, really long time. And it's the first bullet hell game I've ever actually enjoyed. Normally, I don't really care for them. Okay. Well, that's a high praise, man. So it sounds like an easy recommend. Hopefully, this one comes to console. It is slated uh, to come to console, but not until 2023. Okay. And well, I, I will I keep my eye on it. it. Yeah. Very cool. That is Scathe. Once again, thanks again for checking that one out, Kevin. Moving on, I want to talk to Owens about Madden 23. Now, now, uh, Chris, you reviewed ones in the past for us, and I believe the last one you reviewed, you were pretty down on it because you said it felt like such a copy of the orig- of the last years that they forgot to change the ads like on the banners and stuff. Uh, are you seeing some positive updates with 23? I am, and unfortunately, some of those updates come from Come from forlorn uh, environments. Uh, John Madden, if in case anybody was been living under a rock, forgive me, uh, did pass earlier this year, and EA Sports was really in tune to give Madden the proper, yes, how do you want to say tribute to the game? Homage, homage, definitely an homage. I mean, you, see, you definitely see the the phases of John Madden to begin the game and even when you start the game there is a very interactive i'm not going to give it away but there's a very interactive part that you play in the john madden tribute and it's a lot of fun especially if you're having to get used to the mechanics again and the mechanics Mm -hmm. are really something in this game that really surprised me because they really going deep i mean you talk about going deep in a football game they go deep in the mechanics of this game it's not so much a pitch and chuck and run the ball kind of scenario anymore if you really want to get fine, which you can do, and you had that, you have that basically default style to be able to play with that. But there's now styles where obviously you have the jukes when you're a receiver or a running uh, receiver or running back. But even as a quarterback, you you the options to throw high or throw to the outside. But now with different stick combinations, if you play this way, you can throw high and over the shoulder. You can go low into mm. the ankle, a toe drag. There are so many more nuances that you can really go into to really tune up your game and to make it much more authentic on the gameplay level. That sounds complicated. That makes me want to want to grab NFL Blitz again instead of yeah. instead of this. Is it uh, is it tough to master or can you can you get used to those controls pretty quickly? It was hard for me to get used to it because I've been playing, you know, a certain way for 25 plus years now. But mm-hmm. it's definitely intriguing especially for those that are especially hold on to the pro controllers that are starting to get hold of those because those have much more sensitive controls and they have a little, I think they would have a little more, they'd be able to steer into the, into the groove a little bit more with those kind with that kind of hardware. Mm-hmm. But the good news is they don't abandon those that are, you know, 20 plus year players and play with that standard style. And then you can still enjoy the game that way. Gotcha. Okay. So, so that was going to be my question. So you can still play, like, if I went and picked it up, and I haven't played a Madden game in, like, five years, if I went and picked it up, I'd still be good to just play the old way? Absolutely. Or, okay. Absolutely. I mean, there, there's enough new in there, even if you're playing the classic style, that you'll still get a lot of enjoyment out of this. I was surprised. I mean, there's a lot of trolling going on right now with, like, some of the errors, and, the, and I'll get into those later, but 
there's a, like it's not just depth in how the controls are made. There's also depth depth in the gameplay. The franchise mode is there again as it always is, but you can go just player. You could be the head coach and you know, take over those kind of elements. Or it, they brought back owner mode. I remember there was an owner mode back years back where you controlled sessions. You controlled. You can move the team. You control. You know how the stadium works, etc. And have all your advisors about just how you're running the team. And be able to take in those elements along with running the team, making trades, playing the games, etc. Hmm. And the other mode that they've developed over the years is face of the franchise. This year, they've taken a all-known element in the pro world is that you are a fifth-year player. And usually how football works is that you have a first contract as a four-year rookie contract for X amount of dollars. And you, you're signed to the team, and some are bigger than others, depending on your draft pick, as you know, as put out there. But you play the four years, and either you re up on the fifth year option, or you are released, traded, etc. You are a player, and it's either quarterback, running back, wide receiver, even on the defensive side of the ball. There's options. There's many options that you take and run even several careers simultaneously that you pick up on a team, and you can choose an offer depending on your play style. How many credits you earn to build your player? It's really a defining process as far as how you sign and how you benefit from that signing, and then move into the game mode that way. So you actually just play as that one player, as opposed to like running the whole team yourself. Like you just play as the running back and try to get open, or and you play as the running back and try to find holes. That's right, and they even take depth a little bit more into that because not only is it that, but you, every, anybody who's played a man game has that top view. Okay, you can see the players, you can see the lineup. But mm-hmm. I'm playing as a quarterback right now. And when you play as a quarterback, you're just seeing the view of the quarterback. I mean, it's not so oh, wow. tunnel of like you're just seeing the center and kind of having to look left and right, which you do have to do. But it really condenses the view so that you're, you know, you're really having to look around and really study your coverage to know what you're going to, how you're going to attack it. That seems okay. very complicated. That does sound complicated, but it's an interesting way to, to go about it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of intrigued by that. Yeah. So. This is a, I call this a developmental step that EA took because for years, and Kevin, you can attest to this, that it's been repetition, it's been buggy, it's been just uh, rubber stamp go, rubber stamp go. They've really taken, I, I, I hope John Madden's passing didn't play into this, but it really took a step to innovate and they did quite a few things well. There's some things that are still buggy in there, like if you're, you have objectives that you have to play off of, like you hold the offense to 20 points or less. And I did that every other game, and I did not get rewarded for it. Wow. And the tackling is still a little sluggish as far as how you're bringing guys to the ground, but those are drops in the bucket compared to everything they've been able to do. That sounds awesome, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear that uh, it is... You're, you're talking about it positively, because to be perfectly honest, um, you're the first positive comments I've heard about this game, at least from my perspective on on reading Twitter comments, which I know is not a great place to to go for that. Yeah, it's but, getting uh, trashed pretty bad. It is getting trashed pretty bad. So, are you are you finding any any negatives outside? Of, I mean, you just said slight bugginess, but I mean, is it running pretty smoothly? Is there is there any credence to uh, the negativity that people are talking about? Well, I haven't done any online play, so I don't know if that's having any effect at all. But as far as the modes I've been playing in, aside from the sluggish tackling, I haven't found much much beyond the little things that I'm finding. Overall gameplay, I think, has been very good. Okay. Good to hear. Glad to hear, man. All right, so that is Madden 23. Sounds like you do recommend it uh, as opposed to previous years. If anybody can look past, I'm going to call it trolling, you know, Kick my butt if you want I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, to, to Twitter and whatnot because it's, the last few years have been have not been good. If you can look past that and really take an honest look at it, I think you'll be so pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that, awesome. that makes me excited because I like I was actually worried coming on to talk about this because I had I'm, I've been seeing how it's been getting beat up pretty bad. I was yeah. like, uh, yeah. But Scott now I'm actually I, now I'm actually optimistic. Scott mentioned I trash past um, versions and rightfully so, but no, this yeah, one I, I found. Heard. Like I said, aside from the little stuff, I find very little big things to really put down on it. Good to hear. And uh, now Kevin's just chomping at the bit for another NCAA game. Yes. To... <laughs> uh, 
All right, moving on, Rel. I am so excited. I got to tell you, man, um, when uh, <laughs> we got this review copy for Jack Move, I was insanely jealous that you got to <laughs> review this one because I was backed up and behind. Um, this game looks, it looks just like a, a game that's made for me. Uh, it's very reminiscent of some older JRPGs, but talk to us about Jack Move. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. I'll start by saying that pretty, I mean, cause it's <laughs> yeah. pretty, that's for sure. Yeah. Now I do want to point out, um, like the, the, uh, cinematic cutscene that was presented, like the fully animated one, that's not necessarily representative of the style of the game. Uh, it's more of the like high def pixel art type thing. It's all uh, the rage right now. It's so yeah. hot right now. It is. And it looks really good. It Easy looks really good. Too. I mean, it's it's like a very uh crisp uh cyberpunk style world uh with a very like traditional JRPG turn-based uh combat system with mm-hmm. the prerequisite, you know, bar across the top of the screen showing whose turn is next so you can plan out your strategies and whatnot. But it's also really tough. Oh, no. You have a lot of enemies. Like, if you go in the wrong place, and you can, uh, you will get one shot. And you have to, like, you have to really keep up with um, setting up your deck. Because one of the, the main conceits of the combat system is you have three different types of uh attacks that you can do like you know wetware cyberware um and i can't remember the other one but there's a brain attached to it it's purple uh it's it's a rock paper scissors thing where you know one beats the other mm-hmm. and one of the the main conceits of the game is that you can only attach uh a certain number of pieces of software to your deck And so you have to kind of plan ahead and think, okay, I'm going up against enemies that are more electro aware. So I got to get some wetware stuff up in here so that I can defend better against their attacks and do more damage to them. Because if you tight match, just like Pokemon or Fire Emblem or whatever else you prefer, uh, you will deal more damage. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. What's the story about? So the basic premise behind it is uh, you play as a hacker whose father is uh, kidnapped by one of the mega corps that obviously rule the world because that's where we're going with this nowadays. <laughs> and <laughs> I was going to say Facebook, but okay. I'm fighting a cold, sorry. <laughs> uh, and so you are, uh, like, you basically have to rescue him because... He's your dad, although it's a more complicated relationship than that, because you really don't want to have any, like, the character, the main character doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Mm. But, you know, still your dad, still kidnapped, still a megacorp that you hate, and they're doing nefarious stuff, probably. So, I guess you gotta... <laughs> it's it's very much a reluctant heroine uh, type of deal. And so far, I'm about... 40, I'm guessing 40% of the way through the game based on the achievements that I have thus unlocked. It is hard to tell because since this is uh, pre-release right now, uh, I don't actually know what the other achievements are. I just know there's 10 of them and I've gotten four. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I know enough to know the basic premise behind the story, uh, the stakes, which is, of course, not just uh, the main character's father, but also the nefarious things going on. Uh, behind the scenes with the megacorp uh, and you know the fate of humanity and all that so I'm, I'm cognizant of that and also I uh, got a good handle on the battle system and it does feel like I'm m- more than 40 percent I guess because based on the equipment that you can get in the shops that has level requirements the biggest thing that you can get has a level requirement of 20 and I'm at level 17 so oh. Unless there's stuff that you can get after that that's just found out in the wild, I might be getting closer to the end of the game than I thought. But again, I have no idea because I can't look at the achievements yet. Oh, that makes sense. I, w- I want to ask you, though, about these, uh, you know, you, you mentioned areas that you go into and you'll get one shot. 
Is there any indication that you're going into a wrong area outside of just, you know, entering a battle and getting killed right away? Yeah, they do. They do make sure to tell you, like, there's an NPC sitting right outside that particular uh, area transition that tells you, hey, you know, there's a, a lot of bad dudes mm. in the rivers, in the er, like in, in the, the, the river area. And you can choose to just ignore him and go on over there and get your butt kicked. Okay. So there's no... There's no strategy that's going to help you. You're just going to you're just going to be overwhelmed. Yeah, at, at that point, yeah, you, they just do way too much damage. Now that said, the rest of the game, like I said, is pretty tough. Uh, this is because you are only a single person. All of the attacks are focused on you, and you do have to do some serious health and like resource management to make sure that you don't get nuked. Gotcha. Yeah, I was so I was going to ask because in in the the videos that I saw, it, it so it's only you. You don't get friends to go with you or anything like that. I so far have not gotten any friends, and uh, based on where the game has been going so far, it doesn't look like I'm going to. Okay, because I'm a fair chunk of the way into the game, and the only like possible companion that I got that I met, I left behind at my partner's place, who is just you know the dude in the chair who uh assists in the missions okay uh who spoilers i think he's going to betray me (laughs) there's been zero indication of that other than some vague pieces of dialogue like really early on oh okay so not a spoiler yeah i agree with kevin that it seemed like the i I, i'm not used to solo jrpgs so that's really an interesting interesting concept i can't think of one no i I, honestly it's always party based when i think of jrpgs dragon quest the very first one you are oh, a lone yeah, hero who goes through the ever. entire game. Okay, and the, the only other question, classic I, twist. <laughs> yeah, the only other question I had was like, like you you spoke of cards. So is this like a card, like a deck building card battling game, no. or, or was that? No, it's more like um, you have a certain number of slots open on your deck. Um, each like program, each piece of software that you can use, whether it's like you know wetware, cyberware, electroware. Uh, or healing spells, or various buff spells. Like I say spells or programs. Your programs. Same it's thing. all cyber stuff. <laughs> it's dirty, all man, cyber get stuff. dirty. Yeah. Uh, all of these programs use up a certain amount of RAM, and you have the capability within the game to essentially um, give up a turn in order to uh, like reorganize and re-equip so if you've got a whole bunch of like electroware stuff and you're going up against electroware enemies and you can it does show like uh, this enemy uses this attack and it shows you it's color coded so you can see that uh you know you're going up against electroware for instance and so you get up a whole bunch of wetware stuff in your deck and suddenly uh you're you're much better positioned to do a lot of damage and possibly reduce damage done to you okay that almost reminds me of the paradigm shifts from final fantasy 13 where like instead of you know choosing different attacks or different uh, weapons, you're you're like rearranging that, but not not to that level of complexity. But yeah, kind of. I mean, this is this is more uh, finding space in a very limited uh, inventory uh, mechanic to uh, like fit the the very specific uh, programs and abilities that you need. Okay. I'm still intrigued, man. Yeah, still I mean, fun. yeah, the, the difficulty scares me a little bit, but, um, I, it just, I don't know the art style. And I'm, I wasn't even talking about just the art style of the, the cinematics, like you were talking about, I think, you know, the art style of the game itself, just, I love that 16 bit style with JRPGs. I kind of miss that. Yeah. It is very pretty. Yeah. You recommend it? I think so. I will point out though, that, uh, the battle system overall felt uh, not simplistic, but it's it's not as complicated as I'm making it seem. I guess okay. uh, it's it's very much a turn based RPG for better or for worse. Uh, it's certainly tougher than something like say you know Dragon Quest Eleven uh, is one that I can point to. I don't know. I I couldn't possibly compare it to like Persona Five or not Persona. 5, well, both Persona Five uh, and uh, SMT Five because I haven't played SMT Five. Uh, but so far in the 40% of the game that I've done, I haven't had to completely swap out my deck 
for like each and every single encounter because I've, I've uh, thanks to the money that I've made grinding a little bit, I've been able to fit like one of each program type in my decks. So I've been just, you know, using those. But I can tell as it gets later on, more powerful programs use more memory, which uses more space, which means I got to suddenly decide which programs am I going to use if I want to use the really beefy stuff. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. So I That's think I can appreciate that. That's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, once again, that is Jack Move. The developer is uh, so romantic. And uh, we want to give a shout out to Vicarious PR for hooking us up with a copy of that. Uh, it's uh, You're playing it on PC, but it is also coming to consoles, uh, but a little bit later. Yeah, I believe it's coming to Nintendo Switch. I didn't. I don't remember if I saw anything about it coming f- to uh, PlayStation and Xbox. I know Xbox for sure because I actually uh, asked the my contact about it, and they said, "Yeah, but it was coming uh, later in the month." So, mm. yeah. All right. So, thank you all three of you for stopping by to talk about your respective games. Uh, it's uh, really cool to. I, I love these open discussions between uh, between friends. So, thank you guys for coming, man. Yeah, thank you again for the opportunity. Yeah. We'll catch you guys next time, all right? All right. See you. Later. Thanks again, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. Real quick, want to remind everybody about our social media outlets if you'd like to join in our community here at The Gaming Outsider. Our first one can be found at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. We've got several new members to say hello to. We've got Heidi Link, Nathan Chesterfield, Scott Samens, and Eric Cole. Welcome to the community and the group. Hope you guys are enjoying it over there. Also, our Discord community is still live and thriving. You can find a link for that in the show notes for this episode. Drop us a review if you get a chance. We do appreciate it. And also check out our website, thegamingoutsider.com. There you can find all of our episodes. You can find all of our written content, which includes my catch-up this week. Uh, I did some, I did a, a few reviews. You can see my written review for Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, Zombie Rollers, Pinball Heroes, Rogue Legacy 2, and the aforementioned Yars Recharged. I really would appreciate it if you check those out and read them. Uh, We put a lot of work into doing those. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our From the Outside In topic. This past Friday was National Dog Day. Yes, that is a thing. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to discuss our favorite animal or otherwise companions in our favorite video games. So... I want to ask you guys, before we actually get into the specifics of which ones are our favorites and which ones our listeners love, if given the choice, do you go for a pet companion when playing games or do you prefer to go it alone? I feel like I know Alyssa's answer already. <laughs> do you want me to go first then? or Yes. Okay, so everyone knows, or if you're new here, I have a really tender heart when it comes to animals and I cannot see stand to see them injured them dying, anything of that nature. So, if there is an option to have a pet companion, I will look up online if it's possible. <laughs> I will I will look up if they can die. If they can die, I do not take them on as a companion. I will only have them as a companion if they do not die. And it's optional. Like, if, it, if they're a permanent companion and they die, oh boy. Oh boy. So, Alyssa, instead of going to canyoupetthedog.com, she goes to doesthepetdie.com. Hey, there, there's a website called doesthedogdie.com. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's really not... I, w- I should have expected this is where the answer was going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really just thought it was going to be, oh, yeah, definitely I get, the, I get the pet. Whatever it is, I want to... Can I pet it? Like that, That's where I thought this is going. That's really funny. That's an... Ad- you're adorable, oh, Alyssa. thank you. <laughs> I know they're just pixels, but I can't, my heart can't take it when they're hurt or they die. <laughs> CB, what about you? All the pets. Give All them the pets? Me. I mean, yeah, if, if I can have, if I can have the animals, I'm bringing the animals. I mean, right. even, even back to my wow days, I loved having all my little pets. <laughs> they were everywhere. That's what I was like, like my favorite thing to, we're, we're, um, Amber Lily, our, our listener, likes to collect the, the mounts in mm-hmm. World of Warcraft. I collected the little pets that you could bring everywhere. Nice. So, yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, I get pets, but not for the companionship reasons. 
I will get a pet if they serve me some function in the game that makes it better for me. Um, they I've, serve I've, you with happiness. <laughs> that, that does nothing for me, but uh, <laughs> I got I got real cats. So no, but I mean, uh, this isn't really a one that would be on my list because I don't have a specific one. But the example, oh my goodness, Torchlight. Did anybody play Torchlight? No. Yeah. Torchlight was a Diablo ish game but it had pets in that game there were pet companions that i basically used as mules because you could literally load up your your pet with every all the collectibles that you got on the in the middle of a mission and just send him back to your base camp so you didn't have to carry your loot anymore and i could go pick up more loot so that's an example of me using a pet in the game but only because it served a functional purpose for me as a player you're a jerk. <laughs> I don't know when I when I play when I'm when I'm playing the games that I usually like to play. I love just going it alone. I remember I grew up major fan of Metroid, and part of the appeal of Metroid was the isolation you felt. There was nobody to talk to. There was nobody being to be a companion with. It was all about figuring this out on my own. And there's something about that isolation feeling that I found appealing and I always like going that route when I'm playing games I mean I'm not going to not talk to NPCs you know I'm not going to I'm not going to avoid everybody and just be a mute character I still have conversations with them but I like being the lone wolf so unless it serves a purpose and I know like some in Fallout 4 I think you know you could you could do mules as well in yeah. Fallout 4 or Fallout 3 or 4, 4 for that matter so yeah, they got they got to serve a purpose. Otherwise, I don't I don't I don't need someone to talk to or, or be buddies with along the way. So let's go over some of our favorite pet companions in games. What comes to mind when I say quote pets in video games? CB, we'll start with you this time. I mean, I'm... you sh you should already know. Uh huh. It's the dog meat man. Yeah, yeah. He's my bro. <laughs> I mean, I, dude, I love dog meat like. You've Every, had two dogs of that type of dog since I've known you. <laughs> and Rose would not let me name Titan dog meat because I would have. Like, it's dog meat. I, I, my first, my first uh, pet that we got together, I mean, I found a German Shepherd that looked identical to dog meat. Yeah, he really did. And he or wait, was, that's not... Was that Titan? That was Titan. Oh, okay. And he was my bestest friend. Aww. He was a cool dog. I love that dog, man. He barked um, to me a lot less than than. Yeah, uh, Orion's Ryan just does. a spaz. Like he's <laughs> he's not a smart. Dog. He's a he's a good boy, but he's dumb as bricks. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 not smart. No, but he's he'll he's, bark at me, and then I'll be like, "Come here, boy, I'll pet you," and he'll pet I'll pet him and pet him and pet him. And he pet walks him, like three feet away, <laughs> and then I and then I just stop petting him, and he step, takes three steps back and just barks at me like I'm like I'm breaking in the house or that's, something. That's unfortunately the husky side of him. Yeah, <laughs> they're not smart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I love dog meat. Dog meat was like my favorite. Um, dog from Half Life Two. All right. Don't know that one. Oh, bro. He's a giant robot, and his name is Dog, and he plays <laughs> Fetch. He is amazing. Um, One of the other ones, you can see, he's right behind me here. Yes. BD1. Yeah, I have a BD1, a life-size BD1 in my room. We're definitely blurring the lines of pets, by the way. Yeah. yeah. But, but BD1 is... Like you, you can't play him. He fetches things for you. You can pat him. He's adorable. I mean, he's pretty cute, dude. BD One is a maze balls. Um, but yeah, like I, I will, I will go out of my like. I love pets and games, man. That they're they're great because okay. I mean, you look at the lone survivor in Fallout. Like every image you always see, it's him and dog meat. It's true. Because he is awesome. I even have a stuffed dog meat. Oh, I think I've seen it, actually. Yeah. And he's got his little goggles and everything. <laughs> yeah. So cute. Yeah. He's really awesome. So those those would definitely be my my three favorite. Well, I, listen, I, haven't, a... I haven't found a game where I can have a cat, though. 
That's a like, good point. I can't think of one where you have a cat. Yeah, like because it's always, it's always just the dog. But I, I want a game where like I have an apartment that I can go to, and I've just got a cat that's a dick. <laughs> Like I mean, you're just walking around you, the apartment and this cat's just sitting there knocking stuff over. Dude, like, you don't have to look far. <laughs> like, yeah, I that's... I know. But but I want a game where they have that. It's just like the cat kid was like out of its but as a player, just like, oh yeah, I had a long day shooting the bad guys, come back to my apartment. And this is cat that's just like, screw you. Knocks your gun <laughs> off, accidentally shoots you in the leg. Like, come on, man. I think that would actually be hilarious. That would be pretty funny. Alyssa, how about you? Well, to me, pets and games mostly consist of animals. You know, dogs. There really aren't cats as companions. Um, horses. But I do think, you know, BD1, adorable little robots like that. <laughs> Takes the cake for you, huh? Yeah, it does take the cake. I also consider the companion cube in Portal oh, a pet. Yeah. Because I grew so attached to that dang cube. It did nothing. It's I know, but it doesn't matter. It's there for you. <laughs> it was my friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I do love me some companion cube. You know, I I replayed those games recently, and it was still hard to put that companion I cube know. down. That, that and then glad yeah. makes you feel so bad about it afterwards. Yeah, she was so good. Oh man, those games are good. Ah, uh, for me. I mean, what kind of Zelda fan would I be if I didn't mention Epona? No. Right? Not good enough. What if, do you mean, if, not if, good enough? If I could not have BD1, Epona, like, no, that is a workhorse. What? You had a like relationship that. with Epona. You played it a That's song a when you were a child, and then when you were an pets. adult, you went back and you played the same song, and the horse remembered you and came to you and was at your side. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. it. Shut up. <laughs> uh, how, how about Rush from Mega Man? Talk about functionality right there. The Rush jet, the Rush boingy thing. I'll give boingy. you that. Spring. Dong. I, Rush was cool, and he was a good boy. How about uh, my last one? Blob. From, from a, a boy, boy is blob. blob? Dude, he was awesome. You feed him jelly beans, wow. he turns into a ladder. <laughs> I thought of one. See, you you just seem to like. I want my pet to work for me. Yes. No, now you're I getting want, it. I want my pet to be there for me. Yeah, my pets in real life do because they're they're not functional at all. Yeah. Well, no. Okay, one of your one of your cats is there for you. Yeah. The rest are like, no, we don't like you. No, I, RC is all about me. She, she's RC's better. all about everybody. <laughs> yeah. You true. pet me, we're friends. Yeah, it's true. True. All right, that was our thoughts. Let's see what the listeners said. We'll start over on Facebook. Uh, first comment comes from uh, Scott Calgaro. <laughs> uh, oh, he said, dog meat is awesome for a companion. This was CB's pick. Aside from being able to carry a ton of gear and extra weapons for you, he's actually very useful in a fight, especially against ghouls and raiders. Just have to make sure you find armor for him. And Brandon Lloyd also agreed and just said dog meat. That was from... Because uh, he is the uh, bestest boy. Discord. I didn't know you could get armor for yeah, dog dude. meat. I don't dude. remember that. That's how much he's, I used the companion. I didn't use him that he's much. He's the best. <laughs> That's awesome. See, you want to take the next one? Uh, Chris Adams. My favorite game companion would have to be the dog from Fable 2. Also a good boy. I remember the dog from Fable 2. He grew old, too. Oh, he had, okay. like, great, great chin hairs. Um, at the end of the game, spoiler warning, you choose between a lot of money and bringing back all the people who died, or bringing your dog back to life. I choose my dog every time. <laughs> he finds buried treasure for you, attacks enemies when they're on the ground, plus he takes a bullet for you in the story. Aw. Yeah, do dog was good. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a good boy. We so, had another... Oh yeah, and then uh, Drew Ross also said, your dog in Fable 2 and 3. He's your ride or die. Yeah. There you go. Alyssa? Sean Coates says, Far Cry 6, chorizo is adorable. I forgot about Far Cry 6. I'm not D usually one for using animal companions in games, and what little I do use them is pretty much only with the Far Cry series. 
is very cathartic, brutally taking down an enemy when they're distracted by Chorizo's cuteness. I can't think of a better accessory to murder. <laughs> Cheeseburger the Bear in Far Cry 5 is also, is also <laughs> worth noting. Lastly, Far Cry Primal is, of course, a game where animal companions are an essential mechanic since both saber-toothed tigers are meant to replace heavy artillery and modern weapons. I forgot about Far Cry. Dude, I, I che had an cheeseburger was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> Love cheeseburger. I had an attack gator in Far yeah. Cry 6. I think it was one yeah. of the first ones you get. That's just cool, man. The, <laughs> just... the gator or the rooster? The rooster was not the one to... Was the rooster the one that would like dig up... No, no, Chorizo would dig up stuff, right? Yeah. Chorizo would dig up stuff. The rooster would just like come out of nowhere, just assault people. Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's a good call, Sean. I completely, I didn't even think about the Far Cry series for companions. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, last one on Facebook, Chip Halt says, I got very attached to my horse in Red Dead Redemption 2. At first, for gameplay purposes, I was diligent about keeping him well-fed and groomed. For some reason, that mechanic, along with all the time spent riding around, got me so attached that I never upgraded the horse. I used him the whole game. Dumb, perhaps, but it worked. Oh, I have a story I'm about the horse, my horse in RDR2. Okay. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> I love this horse, okay? I, I used it for most of the game. And I was going to cross a road, and I, I looked. There were no cars coming. I crossed the road with my horse. Out of nowhere, this car just plops on the road, or carriage plops on the road. Runs into my horse. It throws me off. I go, I see my horse lying on the side of the road. I run. My horse is dead. Oh no. From this carriage that came from nowhere. So did you see it like clip into the or, like pop into the environment or did it, it like, just came out pop in off screen? It was just like I was crossing oh. the road, it came out of nowhere. Red Red Dead was infamous for that. Like you would look, look away, and look back, and they'd be like, Oh look, there's ten people in a car. <laughs> uh I will say that poor horse in Red Dead Redemption 2 got murked by me. More times than I care to count. <laughs> I kept mine alive so long, and then I had to go get another one. I'm like, you're not as cool as my other one. <laughs> there was so many times, though, I used that horse as cover. <laughs> Be like, I have a giant bullet sponge. Wow. Look at him go. <laughs> you love that horse. That's why I, I always I named him Glue. <laughs> I like Chip's story, though. I love that he got yeah, attached to this horse. That's so that, oh, yeah. That's, that's kind of cool. I like it. Especially, maybe that's why the developers did that, where you could put so much care into the horse that, like, you know, I put all this work into it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love this thing. Yeah. All right, moving on to Discord. Thomas Beck says, do talking skulls count? Because then it's Murray from Monkey Island. Man, if talking skulls count, then I'm going to say Johnson from... Uh, um, <laughs> that's a companion. Dam? Johnson was a is this Shadows of the Damned? Shadows of the Damned, yeah. I mean, if Talking Skulls and Monk Allen count, those are he different. Was a, he was a companion. And not just because of the obvious innuendo reference of that of that playing, character. Playing with your Johnson. He was he was a fantastic uh voice acted character and well written character. Fantastically. I'm gonna fix my grammar. So, Fair enough. So, Thomas, I'm going to say it counts because I want mine to count. So, there you go. All right. Mark Szymanski, uh, Sniper Wolf's Wolves. Say that five times fast. In Metal Gear Solid, uh, hit Meryl, hide in a box, get peed on, wolves stop attacking you, great companion. I don't remember that. I don't either. <laughs> Is that another one of those Kojima things that, like, you didn't know the easy way to, to beat something? Yeah. Well, I mean, that I, I, man, I just realized that uh, BB is kind of a pet. Oh, I didn't play enough of that game to really know what, know how much you interact with BB. Quite a bit. Yeah. I need to just go watch a YouTube video of that story. Cause... That's, a, that's a long video, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I'd rather watch that than play the game. I hope you're ready for a mini series. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. All right, Alyssa, I think you're going to like the next one. Rusty says, BD1, hands down. Yes, Rusty. Me and CB agree uh -huh. with you. He holds my drugs. 
He does, actually. I mean. Yeah. Um, Bill Gardner, clearly Mimir from God of War is the only right answer. <laughs> I, He's awesome. If we're going Talking Skulls, yeah, Mimir. Yeah, I guess you kind of have to. If we go Talking Skulls, you have to accept a, you know, a living, a head. dead skull head yeah oh man then you could uh include the boyfriend from lollipop chainsaw yes. oh my god was his name nick i can't remember <laughs> i think it was nick yeah man but we were this this whole pet companion thing took a took a strange turn <laughs> I, I, I guess we could include bj blaskovitz oh my god spoiler alert <laughs> i didn't say why we could include him <laughs> Uh, apparently, like that just needs to be a topic one of these weeks. Like best talking heads in video games. <laughs> apparently, there's a lot more than we thought there was. Yeah, jeez. We They're could everywhere. play like talking heads music in the background when we discuss. Oh, good lord, <laughs> psycho! <laughs> All right, we've got a couple more left. Uh, Kevin Honigford in Divinity Original Sin Two. There was a quote unquote companion. Uh, that you could find that was a squirrel riding a cat skeleton. <laughs> what? Uh, it would follow you around if you had the speak with animals ability. The banter was absolutely comical. He would keep going on about being heroic and preventing the coming of the great acorn. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> the end of the world. He would try to help in battle, but really didn't do any damage or anything because, well, he's a squirrel. <laughs> it was quite possibly my favorite part of the game, and I loved that game. I've never played Divinity Original Sin 2, and I need to play Divinity Original Sin 2 know. right now. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of uh, my, my pet in our D&D campaign. Oh, Droop? Yep. I, I have my little battle goblin. Oh, we sometimes forget about Droop. Everybody right. forgets about Droop. <laughs> Last one, Alyssa. Green Palkia? Palkia? Mm-hmm. No Man's Sky has bizarre companions, but I love them. I myself had a have a writable bouncing mushroom. There you go. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun. The pets are everywhere. Thank you, everybody, for contributing to the topic this week. Uh, next week's episode is going to be the first of September, which means that it's time for community questions. So get those video game or otherwise related questions ready. And I uh, keep posted on the social medias for your chance to uh, post a comment, and it might get read on the show next week. But that's going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. CB, any parting words or recommendations before we get out of here? Well, folks, I finally watched Nope. Oh. I have not seen that. How was it? Nope. <laughs> so, you didn't like it? Um... Ambiance, great shots. But overall, uh, when it was over, uh, so, all right. So you you've seen Jordan Peele's other movies, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Both was, of them. I was not crazy about uh, us, but I loved Get Out. But uh, us, like, I had some like great moments and some great yeah. stingers. By the time I was done watching Nope, I'm like, ugh, this is dumb. I felt kind of cheated, like. Yeah, it, it was it was two hours for this. Yeah, like it has the least satisfying ending. It's a movie that that the more you think about it after you walk away from it, it has it has some impact, but it didn't it didn't feel deserved to me. I don't yeah. know. And I, I'm and I'm with you. I thought it was shot really well, and it was very suspenseful, and the acting is great. Everything is great. Oh, this the scene when he the the light switch in the barn. Oh yeah, dude, that had me that had me going. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like I'm I'm actually getting goosebumps right yeah, now from that scene. I know what you're talking like, about. Like that was the best scene in the movie. Yeah, because the rest of it was just. Here's the thing: is I'm I'm with you that like I felt dissatisfied, but I would still recommend people watch it. Uh, like I, I know that doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like it, it's it's almost like. I just wanted it to be something else than what it actually I, turned out. I'm to just be. worried we're about to have another M Night Shyamalan. He's not that. It's not that bad. The, M Night Shyamalan's first few movies were great, and then it hit a wall, and then the mm -hmm. fall off was terrible. Yeah. Don't so I'm. Wrong. I do, believe me. I love Jordan Peele's work. I watched. I've actually never seen his Twilight Zone stuff. I got to go watch that. I heard it's it really great. Good. Yeah. But like, I'm just. 
I'm worried, man. Like, mm-hmm. gra- granted, they can't all be bangers. No, I, I'm with you. But that I one I didn't hate was... it, but I just didn't love it. It's my least favorite. Well, I can't say that because I haven't seen Us. But I, de- I loved Get Out. You need to watch Us. Yeah. Us has got some moments, man. I'll check that out. Alyssa, how about you? I would recommend House of the Dragon. I'm pretty sure most people are watching that. <laughs> so I'm going to go with a different option. There was a movie that just came out on Amazon Prime called Samaritan. It's not going to mm-hmm. blow your mind or anything, but it's insane. Stallone? Sylvester Stallone, and it's insanely fun. It's- Somebody posted in our in our Facebook group saying that... Did you see that post? I did not. They were saying that the, they blame the gaming outsider for them noticing arcade cabinets in that movie. Like classic I noticed arcade them as record. well. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. So I'm going to I'm going to have to go watch that movie just to see which arcade cabinets he's talking about. Anyway, I'm sorry, Alyssa, go ahead. It's just it's a lot of fun. Um there are some predictable moments, but it is nice to see Sylvester Stallone in a c- different kind of role for him. Hmm. Um and just there is a an emotional story because it's mostly centered on this young boy. I forget how old he is, but he's probably like 13, 14. And his mom, who are both really struggling, they're in poverty. And this city, it's a it's a fictional city, Granite City, used to have these a superhero <laughs> and a super villain. Yeah, Granite City. <laughs> it, that, that's a restaurant chain out oh. by us. Is that is that a, is yeah. that not by you? No. That's funny. <laughs> Like Scott and I both perked up like Granite City. We're yeah, going. Granite City. Like I just city. I I, I, am- I immediately thought waffle fries as soon as you said Granite <laughs> City fries, and beer. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. And they had a superhero and a supervillain, and their names are just Samaritan and Nemesis. I mean, they're pretty generic names. But then they're assumed to be dead. But the boy thinks that his neighbor, played by Sylvester Stallone, is Samaritan, and that he faked this death. So it's just about him trying to prove. Samaritan's real, but then there's also like gang stuff going on. It's hmm. it's a fun movie, but it's also quite emotional at times. And I was actually surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Very cool. Thanks for the recommendation. You're like the second or third person to recommend it, so I will definitely check that out after I finish Better Call Saul, which is awesome. CB, you need to watch that show. <laughs> I went. Oh. Yeah. No, dude. It d- ain't. D- I understand that, but without Walter White. No, dude, they're, they're, uh, no one's going to top Walter White, but there are some other characters in the show that you haven't met yet in the first season. I, I have a favorite character. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I have a favorite character and, and, and mm, it's really good. And the way that they're tying it into Breaking Bad is so cool. It's not super in your face. Like if you were watching Better Call Saul without watching Breaking Bad first, you wouldn't be completely lost, but you'd be like, oh, you know what I mean? It's it's pretty cool. So anyway, my recommendation is a music recommendation. Um, I actually was talking to a former coworker of mine. Actually, you know him as well, CB, Jordan Carlson. Yeah. And and uh, he is actually lives down in like Louisville now. I used to work with him over at the game at the TNT game store here in town. And he's got a pretty awesome band called Skipping Stone that I hope everybody would check out. He's actually released a couple uh would you call them EPs, EPs. or yeah, EPs? EPs. Uh, the first one is called Hurricanes and Hand Grenades. Mm-hmm. That was released in, on August 5th of this year. And the other is called Monsters of Men. Uh, that was released on February 18th. Seriously, I, I feel bad that I did not check out, take a deep dive into into their music. There is some outstanding guitar work going on. And uh, I'm, I'm really digging. It, it's, a, it's a pretty crunchy... Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it metal, but it's definitely got an edge to it. If you like heavier music, check out Skipping Stone. I'm really really impressed with what they're doing, and uh, I, I've already told them you need to come back I, back here and play Rockford because I would totally go see them play live. So yeah, do me a favor, check them out when they when they if they make it out. See if you want to go see them together. Oh yeah, we'll go hang out with. We'll he's go a, hang out with them. He's a good dude too. So I uh, hope that uh, hope the band goes well, man, and that uh, you get some love because that. I'm genuinely impressed with what you guys are putting together. So, well, everybody, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Would like to remind you once again that The Gaming Outsider is produced by Nate Lucas, and all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemmage and Metroid Metal. 
His website is stemmagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. The address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Chris Behrensmeyer and Alyssa White, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. Mm-hmm.